Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. How are we? It ain't no good morning, Jenny. I, I, well, it is to me. I don't know about you, though. The Russell Westbrook <laughs> era has begun in Los Angeles. And at least LA still has the Dodgers and the Rams because I don't know about your team. You know I what? Don't you know. Know. For, for, for today, you're right. I, I can't even argue with you. Okay. I can't even argue with you. I don't well, know. You got to try. I don't even know how to put up a good defense. Yeah. <laughs> my client might go to jail. No. <laughs> it was one game, right? Just one. One game, right? one game, one, one game. game. Okay, okay. We Thank can you. kind of lead with that. Uh, let's talk about it. The Lakers opening night. It wasn't as smooth as they'd have liked. Shannon agrees. After leading for all three quarters, the wheels came off for L.A. in the fourth as the Warriors went on to win 121-114. LeBron and AD both had over 30 points, but Westbrook finished with only eight points in his Lakers debut. And meanwhile, Steph Curry finished with a triple-double despite calling his own play, quote, trash. Shannon, how do you explain this? Well... If I have to lift it, list, list it in order, Skip, I thought the bench, they got outplayed. They got outscored by 26. Mm. Defense, you give up a team that's a jump-shooting team, you give up 38 points in the fourth quarter, and then free throw. Skip, I asked you this last year, and I asked you this in the preseason. What happened to AD in free throws? You remember his first year there? They would give the ball to AD. AD would close the game at the free throw line. He would. AD was 2-7 or seven the last and night. And don't let your guy off the No, hook. no, Skip. But I never thought LeBron was this great free throw shooter. Okay. He's been basically a, about an average free throw shooter with the exception of maybe one year. I think he shot 80%. But for the most part, he's been a 70, low 70s. And the last couple of years, he's been in the 60s. Three of the last four right. below 70. But and he, he was three of six last night. I knew we were in trouble, Skip, in the fourth quarter. When Avery Bradley, they just signed him a day or two ago. They did. And he's in the closing lineup. Mm-hmm. That lets you know that he's searching for something on the defensive end that he can't get from anyone else. I still, Frank Vogel and his rotations. Why would you ever play Russell Westbrook and Rajon Rondo together, Skip? They were on the court for seven minutes. They were minus 15. Mm. And then, you know, when he said, well, I'm going to see if I can get an even worse lineup than that. He put Melo, Westbrook, and Rondo. They're <laughs> on the court for four minutes, mm. minus 13. Mm. It's going to take a look, Skip. I said, I think it's somewhere around the All-Star game. Skip, this thing might go. We might have to go all the whole season and then finally it come together come postseason time. Mm. I'm going to say the reason why Russell struggled last night, Skip, yep. is that as a kid growing up in L.A., he's always he's bled purple and gold. He has. He's always wanted to play for this team. Yep. So opening night in Staples, mm-hmm. he's amped because he's always, he's a very emotional guy. He's always amped to the highest of amptivity. Now he's on another level. Yep. And it showed last night, Skip. Mm-hmm. He was just... He, and he, no, so, sometimes, a lot of times, he plays like a bull in a china shop. He does. He plays right on the cusp of being over the edge. Mm-hmm. But last night, I thought he went to that place. And he didn't play well at all. Normally, when AD and LeBron score 30, that's mm-hmm. enough to win. Skip, you get 67 and 22 rebounds from those guys. That should be enough, considering... Of the 10 guys that started the game, you got three of the best. You got yep. three of the top five players that's on the court last night. You do. And you lose. Yep. When Steph didn't play partic- Steph didn't play well at all. He said it was trash. It was. Mm. Five of 21. Yep. He didn't shoot the ball from three well. Uh, free throws. We know he's mm-hmm. money at the free throw line. But they won a game in which he played poorly. Um, but the Lakers, whew, it's going to take some time, Skip. Mm. Only thing I can say is one game. Mm. We got 80 more, 81 more of these to go. Mm-hmm. But if you can't beat a Warriors team when Steph is not playing his best with no Clay, no Wiseman, mm-hmm. they might be a foreshadow of things to come. But mm. I'm going to trust LeBron mm. that he'll figure this out. The bench will get their act together. And Vogel will not put no more of these lineups, especially, Skip, maybe there was a time in the 80s, 90s, you could play a lineup with mm-hmm. Melo, Rondo, and Westbrook, yep. but not into today's NBA. Mm-hmm. They don't shoot the ball well enough from the perimeter in order for them to play together. But I thought the bench, the defense, and the free throws were the reason why we lost this ball game. Okay. <sighs> Big picture. If I had not watched what happened last night at Staples, and I just glanced at this box score I hold in my hands, I would think, huh? 
I would think the Lakers won this by 20, which I facetiously predicted they would do on yesterday's show. Right. Because at a glance, I see that the only superstar left on the Golden State Warriors, I don't put Draymond in that category. Right. Obviously, Clay not ready to come back off an mm -hmm. Achilles tear on top of an ACL. But I look at Steph Curry, and he's 5 of 21 and 2 of 8 from 3. And 21 points is not all that bad, but but it's such a horrendous shooting night. It took a 21 night. shot to get it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but by his standards, that is, as he called it right after the game, a trash night. Yeah, yes. And then I look at your two, your big two, mm -hmm. your best two players on the floor. And I think, wow, LeBron, boy, he had a hot hand. This is about as hot as you'll ever see because yep. he made five of 11 threes. And because I did watch the game, I saw him make four or five fadeaways that were like spectacular. The ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, so he makes 13 or 23 and winds up with 34 points. And his co-star AD goes 15 to 26 and winds up with 33 points. Well, if I see 34 and 33 from your big two, and maybe your boys. biggest two in basketball, I'm saying that that, sh that should do it, right? Yes. yes. So two superstars star and one superstar goes trash. And I'm saying, <laughs> w w wait a second. And then I look at the final score and Golden State wins by seven. Mm -hmm. How could that be? Well, now we go to your third star who looked last night like your fourth or fifth star. Yeah. Russell, as I call him, and dubbed him a long time ago, Wes Brick. Well, he opens up at Staples, first time back in his hometown of L.A., keys to the kingdom handed to him by the king. He's the new point guard, and he opens up 0 for 4 from 3. Well, is anybody surprised by that? No. Because he shot 31% last year right. from 3, and <laughs> that was actually pretty good because he had three straight years before that where he shot sub-30% from 3. He's horrendous. I have dubbed him proclaimed that he is simply the worst jump-shooting superstar we've ever seen in the history of this league. I can't say I agree with you. Okay, and yet he winds up last night, the, the man who for the last five years triple-doubled, average triple-doubles for the whole year for four of the last five, he goes triple-single, <laughs> triple-single. Wait, no, no, this is Russell Westbrook. He goes eight, five, and four. You have to go back over the last 133 games that he's played. You can only find one of these kind of games, a triple single. It was weirdly a couple of years back at San Antonio. Maybe, maybe it might have been last year at San Antonio. I looked it up this morning. But it was just one of those weird anomaly mm -hmm. games where he just triple single. Right. He had a bad shooting night, and they got blown out by 20. And it looked like nobody on Washington was into the game. But, right. But again, that's 133 games right. to find one of these. So what did I see from Russ? As the game started, I saw a guy who's been under fire, principally, foremost for me, about you are nothing but a solo act stat machine, and I love to watch you. You are must-see TV, but you don't fit in what they do. Yes. Because the man who has handed you the keys to his kingdom, the king, he wants to segue over to the two or the three. Right. And actually, he's still the best point guard in basketball. He's still the best passer in basketball. He still has the highest IQ in basketball, even in year 19. But he still was on the ball. He skipped. Okay, he, Brown was he still was. on the ball more than I thought he would Why be. Why was that? <laughs> because you know Russ why. says, I, I got to do this right. So he's under fire. He's on the hot seat. And he's looking around. And he, he just doesn't look like himself because he is going to defer to a fault. Right. And he is going to sacrifice to a fault. So he's dribbling the ball up the floor in the, the bad old days, especially going back to the KD OKC days when he dribbles the ball up the floor about two thirds of the time he's yeah, going to take I'm one gone. look at KD and I'm I'm bull in China shop <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the basket I'm going to the rack I am hell bent C rim attack rim yep. and if the two of them meet me at the rim I'll leave it for Steven Adams to dunk and I'll get another assist did I see much of that at all last night? I'm not sure I saw any of that no. Russ last night, right? And when he did drive it, it was tentative. It was timid. And I never thought I would put those two adjectives right. in the same sentence with Russell Westbrook. But Skip, if you watch the way the games, and there are only two games on last night, they're not calling that little ticky-tack. No, not, oh, they, oh, they weren't giving it to him. And he was begging, man. Right. Even even in the, the previous game, Skip, they're nope. not giving you the ticky tack nope. stuff that you normally get in the I, last I couple of years. And, it, and even LeBron doesn't get it anymore. Nope. 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 They're both like this yes. after driving the, the ball. AD. And, and there was nothing like 
where, where they got blatantly hacked, right. but, but they got body fouled right. or, you know. And normally in a couple right. of years past, they would give him that call. But Russ okay. is arguing a call. Skip, you remember he slapped the ball out of Draymond? He hit Draymond's hand. It was a foul. He's arguing against the tech. Bruh, bruh, you fouled him. Okay. So what do I see? Now we look at the hidden stats here that don't lie. And I'm looking at LeBron James. Do you realize that two years ago for your Lakers, he yeah. led the league in assists at 10.3, I'm sorry, 10.2 assists per night. Right. Per game. 10.2. What did he have last night? Five. Five. He had half of what he averaged two years ago mm -hmm. to lead the league. It's wrong. He's too good. It's, it's what he was born to do, to be the point guard, the quarterback, the initiator, the orchestrator. And too much of the time, he wants to be a three-point shooter. So what did he do last night? Okay, remember, last year he averaged a career high in three-point attempts, 6.3. Well, last night he, he took 11. 11. It's a lot of threes for LeBron James. Mm -hmm. And how many times did he drive it all the way to the bucket and to either score it or get to the free throw line? I don't know, two or three times right. maybe. I've, I've always told you he's the greatest driver of the basketball I've ever seen. But he doesn't do that that much. And you can say he's got to preserve his body mm -hmm. a little bit in year 19. And I give you that. But he also knows he's not a very good free throw shooter. In fact, he's, he's a poor free throw shooter yeah. by superstar standards. So he starts off three of six last night. Mm -hmm. And we've got a bet. I don't know what it was. You, you say it's 72 or 73. three. 73, I think it was 75. That no, was, was your initial last offer. Year. Yeah, well, whatever. But he's off to the races, right? <laughs> But okay. he'll go, but you know, he'll go eight for eight on Friday. Okay. And we'll be yeah, and he also has a three for eleven in him somewhere. You, you know, and I know that's just <laughs> who he is. So, Russ has a horrendous night by Russ standards, and he winds up a minus twenty-three. But the other hidden note here in the box score is that LeBron and AD weren't great last night because they went up minus twos, right? Yeah. Which is not great. So, But their running mate, their third star, was minus 23. But, Skip, but when you look at it, you think about this. They had The Lakers had two guys in double figures, and the Warriors had six guys in double figures. And that's where they won. You get Bielitsa had 15, yep. Iguodala had 12, da uh, uh, Damian Lee had 15. You're, you're talking about bench players. Yeah, the that's bench where play. you're 55 to 29 right. bench Right, and then you get score. Wiggins had double figures. Yep. Jordan Poole had double figures. Yep. The only two guys and double figures for the Lakers were AD and LeBron. Okay, and just for balance on this, remember, last night they're, they're obviously without Ariza, but they didn't right. have Ellington, they didn't have none, they don't have THT. Mm -hmm. so, so there are four bench players, which brings us to Carmelo Anthony. We got to see him in purple and gold for the first time, and it was a sight for sore eyes, and yet... You want to, you want to talk about a guy who's not bashful? If if the oh, ball shoot it, if if ball touches hands, it's going up. Yes, I think one time last night he passed the basketball. The other times it's just he's just going to go. Yeah, and he shot three for nine, which wasn't good enough. And by the way, he had one weird glitch at the free throw line. Yeah, I don't the, know what was that. What what was that? I think we have it. A minute four left in the third quarter. Here he is. He's going to shoot a free throw, and and he just. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know. Did he just gag it? Was he trying to do the okie doke? Was it like a globe trotter? I'm going to DQ. I don't know what he was thinking. And he yeah. didn't know what he was thinking. He kind of lost focus of what yeah. he was doing. I don't know. And then he kind of looked around and laughed and said, "Well, because that's a violation." Basically, right. So it it was a bad look for the Lakers because it it's like, aren't you guys better than that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A guy the, a guy in year 19 that's accomplished as Carmelo okay. shouldn't make a play like okay. that. So when Ariza does come back and THC does come back and Ellington and Nunn, I'm I'm afraid Melo's going to be fighting for minutes, yeah, he, right? Because yeah. he got, I don't know, by his standards, pretty many last night, right? He he wound up with 20, 26, 26 minutes, right. right? Okay, so that's that's pretty good. Is he going to get that much run going I don't, forward? I don't know, Skip. And the thing defensively, I mean, they really put him in a hot pick and roll, and for some reason he slacks off when the pick and roll guy is Steph Curry. You know yep. you got to hug up with that. Yep. I mean, it's just, the defense, Skip, you can't give up 38 points in the fourth quarter. You gave up 60, what, 60, 68 points in the second half. Yep. With a team that doesn't have a big. Don't wait, except for Bielitsa. Yeah. Who, by the way, on a star-studded night, our man Lil Wayne was there in the yes, front I'm row. Sorry. And Jack was back in the front yes. row. And, and Usher was there. And we can go on and on. Yeah. And we got star power all over everywhere on the Lakers. And we got Steph and Draymond. And we can go. We, we can even do Dwight and Melo. Right. Lots of stars on the court. Right. 
Who took the game over? Bielitsa took, took the mm-hmm. A 33-year-old from Serbia who has bounced around mm-hmm. this league, was briefly, he was Sacramento and then Miami right. a little bit last right. year, and now he's with Golden State. Yeah. I didn't even know he was with Golden State. Yeah. And there he was yeah. in, in full force, and he goes 15 and 11? 15 and 11. And, and who had the most energy in the fourth quarter? Who kept making the hustle plays and he did. the he killer get, plays? He would get the rebounds. It he would hit the because I think some, I, I forget who it was, Kip. There was a sequence in which, oh, Avery Bradley yep. had hit a three, cut it down he to did. like one or two, and, he comes and then right Lisa back. comes right back. I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, he's got guts, and he's got know-how, and he's got savvy. And Miami was like, where was that last year when you were with us? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because I used to see flashes of it in yeah. Sacramento right, for right. a while, and a little bit in Minnesota, but he's bounced around, and yet the unstar took over the star-studded game. Right. Which brings me back to what I call free throws because the word free should oh, be man. emphasized. And your team goes nine of nineteen. So that's unacceptable. Ten missed free throws. And you didn't get you didn't shoot that many. And, for, and think about it, Skip. You got big, you got uh uh you got LeBron, you got A D, you got DJ. Now obviously DJ only played thirteen minutes. You got Dwight Howard, and you got a jump shooting team that shoots eleven more free throws than you shoot. Okay. And so they make 25 out of 30. Right. And they make 16 more than you made. You're plus 16 over the Lakers at Staples? And, and it wasn't because you're getting calls or bad calls right. or non-calls. Right. It, it they wasn't were just making that. them. You, you just didn't make your yeah. free throws, right? It's that simple, Skip. It re- it's really that okay. simple. So plus 16 there is it's hard to overcome, yes. right? Because it's only a seven-point game. Right. So that's a hidden stat. So finally, you step back from this and you say, well, wait a second. You did that, and Steph was having a long, hard night. Right. Well, I'm going to give Russ a little bit of credit here because for much of the game, they were doubling Steph like right. crazy. Baysmore did a good job. But I, have been but, there but for I two thought years. Russ did a pretty good job. Yeah. He was just bird-dogging him, man. Right. I mean, he was right. hounding him right. as best he could. He was right. giving it his all mm-hmm. on the defensive end. And then it looked to me like the Lakers as a team started to run out of gas in the fourth right. quarter because they couldn't stop Damian Lee from just going to the basket. He just went to the basket yep. at will. Yeah. Well, he's not exactly a superstar, right? Yeah, oh, Jordan Poole was killing him. Jordan Poole killed him mostly in the third quarter mm-hmm. to, to set up the run. But, but remember, the Lakers went to the fourth quarter up two, but yeah. then they just started because you gave up 38 at home in the fourth quarter. That's no to a, good. To a jump shooting team. Not, now, the team guy, if you're talking about if that's Milwaukee. With Giannis and, and Middleton and those yep. guys, if that's Brooklyn, yep. Skip, you can understand. Like, okay, man, they got firepower, but to to Steph minus Clay minus Wiseman with no big, Mm-mm. and so all their points either came from jump shots or the free throw line. Yep, no Clay, and and remember, there's, yeah. there's no Wiseman and no Kaminga, who was right. the seventh overall pick, right. so they didn't have some yeah. of theirs also. So if you step back and look at the big picture. Steph Curry last night looks like he spent a lot of off-season time in the weight room because he is, listen, remember how he used to be skinny little oh, yeah, slight yeah, yeah, Steph yeah, yeah, got- back in his MVP mm-hmm. days? He is really sculpted up. You know, he's buffed up. He's right. beefed up in his well, upper body. Well, that might have that might have hurt him because he tried to dunk the ball. <laughs> I, and he grabbed her, he got rid of the ball with what went. Yeah, he he disqualified his own shot, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the point was. He, to my eye, he didn't look as quick as he used to look. He was having trouble separating because right. he used to be able to just step back on anybody. Nobody could stay with him. Right. And he was struggling to get open looks. Right. So they did a heck of a job on him. But guess what he did to compensate? He got 10 rebounds yes. because he is a little stouter mm-hmm. and he's he's less afraid to go in there and mix it up. Right. Yeah, this is only his eighth, uh, eighth uh, career triple double. Only his eighth? So, wow. But Skip, look, look, I, I thought they did a great job of hounding him, contesting a lot of his shot. Rondo put him on the line for a three-point shot, you know, a three, which made, really made no sense. But, yep. you know, give those guys credit. They hounded him, and you says, okay, if someone would have told you, Skip, Steph Curry's going to go 5 of 21, and they're going to shoot 35, 36% from the three. You yep. shoot better from the field than they shoot. You're like, okay, we're going to win this game. But when you only have two guys in double figures, they have six guys in double yep. figures, and your bench get outscored by 26, and you plus, and you're minus 16 at the free throw line, Skip, you're probably going to lose the game. And when you look, Skip, think about it. Go to State out rebounding them. A big team with AD, Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, and LeBron James got out rebounding yep. when the biggest guy, and he only played about 13 minutes, was Kevon Looney. 
Yeah. You can't get out rebounded by the Golden State Warriors under no circumstance. Okay. So back to my preseason points to you. If if you want Russ to be your point, if somebody besides LeBron has to be the point guard because he needs to play more off the ball, right? You should play Rondo more. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you do with Russ because he's going to throw fits if if you start reducing his minutes. Well, how about let him run with the second unit? So you know is, what? Is he going to sit still for that? How about is this, he... Skip? You know, for like the first six, seven minutes of the first quarter, let him play, and then you let let him let him stay out. Uh, I mean, really, truly, the the. The best way to utilize him would be in the, the Manu Ginobili role, coming off the bench oh, yeah, with the shot, but he's not going to do it. Come up he's not going he to do up. it, but I promise you, <laughs> it would it. serve your team best yeah. if he ran the shock troops, if he came in and just went bull in China shop with the, the reserves. Right, yes. And, and they just attacked, yeah, right? I, it I, would change the game. I would agree with you, Skip, but you know a lot of times guys not looking what's in the best interest of me. And that's not, okay. in the best interest of him. He believes is in the starting lineup. I agree with you. I believe if you let him run with that the second unit, it'd be the shot unit, uh, and uh, he's up and down the court. They uh, can get up and down the court because you got younger legs. LeBron comes in, it, plays it would, at that pace. I know it would be, be fun great. To watch. And then the other thing, I I first guessed this. In your starting lineup last night was a guy who got discarded by the Brooklyn Nets, yeah. DeAndre, and and he only played what 15 13 minutes, minutes. thirteen minutes. And he gave you a quick early basket yeah. on a lob dunk yeah. from LeBron, right? But but other than that, what did he give you? He he got discarded. He fell out of the rotation in Brooklyn for a reason. Because those guys, Kevin and Kyrie and those guys love him right. and James. But the point is, Dwight's so much better right now. And they want Dwight to do what we just said Russ is doing. He right. comes in with the shock troops right. to, to, to create chaos, right? right? But last night, he didn't get to play enough, right? Dwight's only in there for a few minutes, yeah. right? So I mean, he, and, he and DeAndre I, played the same amount about of minutes. The same amount, about the okay, same amount of minutes. Okay, that's no good. No good. But Skip, I, Frank, I fought Frank Vogel. You and I talked about this. I said, Frank, what are you doing? Why is LeBron sitting out and AD and Russ playing? Why is AD sitting out and Russ and LeBron playing? Or why are both of those guys sitting out but one of those guys are playing? That makes no sense. And I and I disagree with LeBron. LeBron said what we do on the practice court is more important than what we do on the game court. No, it's not. Because you need to see if what you're doing on the practice court yeah. is going to carry over to the game court. Yeah. There's something to be said about, yeah, I understand that practice and practice. Yeah. But you want to see if that comes to fruition on the actual court. And you can see. Skip, there is a reason why when you look at in the Olympics, and you say, man, we got the best players. How are these games even close? Yep. Because those guys have been playing together damn near all their life. I agree. And you just got together two weeks I ago. Agree. I why. agree. That's why. Final point. So LeBron and AD after the game went on and on about Russ. We told him, don't be so hard on yourself. LeBron said, go home and put a, mood, put a comedy in, watch a comedy. Right. Don't take it out on yourself. Right. Well, they made it very clear. It was his fault. And I've told you from the start that the goat, as you call LeBron, needs a scapegoat. And, and Russ is going to have to realize he is on the hottest seat in L.A. Because when he has games like this, Laker Nation is going to say, it's your fault. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of easy to point at him, Skip, when the other two big guns go get 60, That's 70, 22 saying. rebounds. Yep, but here's the thing. Bad. No, 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 no. LeBron's not going to be able to walk this one off. He can't just take this jacket off and hang it up mm. because they had a deal in place to go get Buddy Heal. They did. And he and uh, AD I, I, wanted Russ. thousand percent so, with you. Thank no, you no, for no, saying no, that. No, 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 that no, is no, correct. no, no, no. He's going to have to wear this one. Yep. This is what you wanted. Rob Palenka gave, gave you and Russ. They ran this by you. You wanted Thank Russ. You. you got Russ. And I said it from day one, Skip. You did. Buddy Heal is a better fit for LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Thank you. He can space the floor. Preach. So they wanted, they wanted another superstar because they wanted somebody to help take the scoring load off of those guys. If, yep. they, if, if one of those guys are out, we still yep. got two superstars on the court. I completely concur. But it, that superstar doesn't fit. I get you trying to get yep. da, uh, uh, Dame Lillard. I yep. get you trying to get Bradley Beal. Agreed. But Russ does not fit with you guys. Got it. But good luck. It's going to take longer than I thought. I thought we can get to the All-Star game, but we might have to go to March or April for this thing. You have oh, my wow. condolences. Seriously? I don't want it. I don't wow. want it. I don't want but it because you don't mean something. it. That is saying something. <laughs> you know, he don't mean it, so Jenny. much more NBA today, including the Bucks picking up right where they left off against right Katie. Right where they left off. And the Nets. Plus, we have the latest on Ben Simmons getting kicked oh, out God. of practice <laughs> in Philly. That escalated quite quickly. Right. Uh, don't go anywhere. We explain. Next. No mercy.
Champs got out on the right foot last night. Giannis picked up where he left off with 32 points, 14 rebounds, and the 127-104 win over the Nets. Kevin Durant also had 32 points, but Brooklyn was out-rebounded by 10 overall and 8 on the offensive side. So, Shannon, was this game more about what the Bucks did or what the Nets did not do? It's the Bucks. Skip the Bucks are really good. These guys, their, their core group has been together for an extended period of time. Uh, Coddington understands his role. Everybody understands their role. Everything is built around Giannis. Giannis does what he does. And I tell you, Skip, he's going to have a phenomenal year. I mean, he got the easiest 32, 14, and 7 that we've ever seen. And he didn't shoot the ball particularly well from the floor. But he's Giannis. And he can, and he's feeling more confident pulling up with the jump shot. Uh, but when you look at it, Skip, they're, they're a really good basketball team. He made 7 of 9 from, uh, from the uh, free throw line. This is a very good defensive team. I think uh, Grayson Allen is going to help them an awful lot. I would this agree. DiVincenzo yeah, yeah. hasn't come back no. yet. He's a ball. It's the same role. You're right, yeah. the same role. So, yeah. so now you get uh, Allen coming off the bench. I agree. I think it's going to help them an awful lot. Skip, this is not, any, not, not a knock on Brooklyn. KD got going in the second half. Skip, he scored 21 of his uh, 32 in the second half. But the game really wasn't that close. I think the closest they got was probably about, about seven. It stretched as far as like 18, 19 at one point in time in the game. Yep. But I think the biggest thing is, is that the, uh, 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 the Milwaukee know who they are. They know what they want to do, and they go and do it. Skip, the thing is that Brooklyn, Brooklyn, KD is a big but they're not a, a big team, and they're gonna get, and that's what Milwaukee does. Milwaukee kills you on the glass, mm. and they were without Bobby Porter, who's another big body guy that can offensive rebound and yep. shoot. And so for me, this wasn't about what Brooklyn didn't do. Yep. This is what this is who the uh, uh, Milwaukee Bucks are, and Giannis. And I said it, Skip, and you know, you like you take it. Yeah, I, I think without Kyrie. <laughs> The book sets up very favorable mm -hmm. in the Eastern Conference. Now, I think this is going to be nip and tuck. I think Miami is going to be really, really good. Uh, obviously, we th believe Brooklyn and the Bucks. We know what they represent. But I don't really think it was anything that Brooklyn didn't do. Okay. This was all about Milwaukee. Milwaukee is really good. Giannis is only going to get more confident. You seen him. He looked at that big old thing from Jason to Beverly Hills. He's like, I got one. He looked up to the rafters. I got one. Mm. Now, you unlocked him, Skip. He, he, he believes he can do all things. Yep. You, you, they've unlocked him because for the longest time, yeah, he's great regular season, but he can't do it in the pole season. Yep. He got knocked out here. He got knocked out there. Mm -hmm. You've unlocked him. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you let him realize just how good he is. You got your hands full moving forward. Okay. I got it. I hear you. I almost co-sign on everything that you just said. But I still believe in the end, this was more last night about what the Nets didn't, couldn't, wouldn't do. What did you tell me yesterday? You suspected that the Nets would win this game because every time you have a ring ceremony, what traditionally happens to the home team? Yeah. The yeah, ring team. Mm -hmm. That you, you just can't focus on the task at hand mm -hmm. because you're, you're still, your heads are in last year. You have right. to go back there. You have to, you've gone through this. Yeah. And you, you put the rings on and you're like, wow, we did that. And wait a second. The team that's favored to win it all this year is sitting there waiting right. for you on your home court. Mm -hmm. And you often lay a big old egg on yep. national TV because you're not quite ready for that night. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Opposite happened. The Nets came out lifeless. They were disconnected. I don't know why. I can go Dr. Freud. I can go Dr. Phil. I can say that maybe the Kyrie Paul is sort of hanging over this team. Maybe, especially on KD. KD was not engaged early KD in this game. KD missed three free throws. He was three or six. He went LeBron. <laughs> KD went LeBron. He I've never went seen LeBron, like he went KD. He went three of six because he's a 90% free throw shooter. Yeah. And I don't know what happened. Because <laughs> that's all you need to know is that he's he just dinking and dunking free throws like they're just teetering around the rim. He missed where, he but, didn't shoot them with any conviction. No, but Skip, he missed some shots that oh. KD normally makes. Even, I mean, even, even his jump shots, even right around the pull-up and, and, okay. and the fadeaway. Okay. KD normally knocks those okay. down. It was clear to me from jump that the home team wanted this game oh, more yeah. than the visiting team. Mm -hmm. And it shocked me because I didn't see it coming. And I don't know, again, they feed off KD's energy, and his energy wasn't usual. So is it possible that he just wrung out from all the Kyrie madness that, that focuses back on him because everybody looks to KD for, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be able to carry this team without Kyrie? And I'm sure it'll the buzz will start now. They missed Kyrie right. last night. I don't think they, they missed miss Kyrie. Would they be better? Obviously, they'd of be better. Of course they would be of better. Of course they would, but I don't think they missed him. But the guy, 
when you played for your team for a number of years, he saved him. This thing was about to get 30 to 40 had he not did what he did. Teddy Mills yeah. made seven of seven yeah. three-point shots. Yeah, he did. And the guy you've been all over, Joe Harris, at least he made three of five last night. And James Harden made four of eight threes. Mm -hmm. And Kevin wasn't horrible from three because he made three, three of seven. seven. Right. So I just gave you four guys who went 17 of 27 from three. Mm -hmm. Three starters in the super sub, right? Yeah. 17 of 27 from three, and it gave you a grand total for the night of 53% from three. That should be good enough oh, yeah. to keep you closer than you right. were. But you're getting battered on the boards. They ended up losing the boards by 10. And I give you that Nicky Claxton, he, he just is too light in the back end yeah. a little bit. You yeah, know, he's yeah. just a little too skinny yeah. to yeah. bang with Giannis yeah, or Brooke or Lopez. whoever it is yeah. because they were having a hard time fighting mm -hmm. them off on the boards. Right. Okay, so before I go deeper into this game, I want to give your man Giannis this much credit. Early in the game, he had missed a three, doesn't bother him, and then he comes right back and he shoots. Can we see the second shot that he shot? Because <laughs> it's just horrendously bad. It's like, what, Giannis, what, what are you doing? This, this is a little jumper, and it hits nothing but backboard. Yeah, he missed the whole rim. He missed I mean. the whole rim from like, <laughs> what is that, like 10 feet, yeah, maybe? Easy 10. Okay, 10 feet, and he misses nothing. He, he hits nothing but backboard. <laughs> and guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It doesn't bother right, him nope. a bit. Because he can't right back down he's, the court. He, he's got the greatest short-term memory I have ever seen because he has no shame in missing those shots like nope. that. What great player, what MVP caliber player would go up from 10 feet and he's, is he 6'11", whatever we say, yeah, 7 he, feet. But anyway, he goes up and he's just got an uncontested right. little 10 foot Ray's jump. Old, and he missed and the ball he, to the left. He, he, he goes wide left yeah. and hits nothing but glass. Nothing but I, I don't know how you do that. But he comes back and he'll make shots. Yes. And he made seven of nine free throws. I was highly impressed right. by that because he got on a roll in the finals last year when you least expected it. Did he make 17 or 19 mm -hmm. in the final? Yeah. He in was the game six? And, he, and it seemed to carry over yes. into last night. Uh -huh. So I'm going to give you that much is that he is as resilient a player as I've ever seen because he's kind of like in his own world. Nothing seems to, you know, he, he doesn't live on the internet, so he doesn't get it. You know, no. like he, he, he doesn't seem to have the perspective of, ooh, I should be embarrassed about right. He's not embarrassed at all no. I, because he knows I'll come right back and I'll get it again. What did you say? He's been unleashed, yep. right? Yep. You've, you've let him out, yep. and, he, and now he, he knows he, uh, that, that he's he, he that good, it. and so he's not going to question himself because he's going to come right back and get you. Right. Okay, now to your point about Kevin Durant scoring 21 in the second half. Slowly but surely, he snapped out of it. Slowly but surely, his numbers came up to where if you look at the final box score, the numbers for Giannis and KD, they're just about the same yes. across the board, yep. right? Yep. It winds up you 32, know, 32 11 to 32. Versus, yep. versus 32 and 14 to yep. 7. Okay, so it's fairly close yeah. because Kevin came on like gangbusters right. over the, the, the third and fourth quarters. Mm -hmm. So if we could see what happened... This is sort of from five minutes down to four minutes of the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. It looks like the game is over, but here we go with Kevin. And he says, I, I'm starting to cook here a little bit. Well, who can stop that? No, you that just vintage, nobody. right? Who can stop that and who can stop this? Like, nobody can stop that. Okay, he had just made those two shots. And, and I'll give you, it cut it only to 14. The right. lead was 14. In today's NBA, with four minutes to go and a 14-point lead, with this kind of three-point shooting, Yeah. Is That's it nothing. doable? No. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's doable. Yeah, it's very doable. At that it's point, more, more than likely okay, we got that okay, team. Okay, Patty is at, at that point seven of seven, and Joe Harris got a fairly hot hand. James has got a hot hand, and Kevin is getting hot. Right. And guess what Steve Nash does with four minutes left? He pulls the starters. He just says, I give up, I wave the white right. flag, I'm done. We're pointing toward the next game. We're, we give you this on your right. ring night, we bow down. Right. And Budenholz wasn't ready to pull his stars at all because he left him in thinking, what, what's he trying to do right. here? He's trying right. to trick me. Trying to okey doke Yeah, is this an okey doke <laughs> Because I was out of my mind. I tweeted about it because you, you can't give up on a game right. in this league, e even in ring night in Milwaukee. Right. You can't let right. that go because I had the feeling at that point, uh-oh, here they come. Yeah. Could they have made it dicey for the I, home I would let them go at least to two minutes. Yes. Just see what happens. Right. See if we can get because, it to single digits with two minutes to go. To your point, Connaughton kept making big threes. And maybe he would have made a couple more big threes for well, all I, I know. I see him make them. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. L let's see it. S show me. Right? 
So I, I was disappointed in Steve Nash because I did not get that. Yeah. And, and I would think Kevin was a little disappointed because he was finally getting his flow. Skip, I don't know if I'm saying the guy's name right now. Jordan Nawara? Nawara. Nawara. He, he was bombing him, too. He was I mean, they steal the ball from James Harden, and he don't go for the layup. He goes to the three-point line and bangs the three. He, and I think did. that's what Steve Nash is. Okay, we good. Okay, maybe it's your night. Okay, yeah, I give it, it up. We, we out. Okay, I just wanted to see a good finish to the game, and right. I think it would have been your basic barn burner yeah. if, if you'd let Kevin go. But, I mean, when you get, Skip, you get Chris Middleton had 20 and Giannis had 32 and you got Allen had 10. Yep. Uh, uh, Holiday didn't play but 18 minutes. He had he had 12. Coddington had 20. You got Nawara had 15. Skip, Skip they deep. Skip, this, is a, deep. this is a they're very, very deep, good. They're a very deep team. I still say I give Brooklyn a slight edge, but only a slight one because they were impressive last night just as they were last year. Yeah. Skip, I think Buck's going to have probably the best record in the East. And so in order for you to, for your, your, your theory to come true, they're probably going to have to go through Milwaukee. Just like Milwaukee had to go through Brooklyn in order to win it, they're probably going to have to go through Milwaukee. The Nets are. Okay. They're well, gonna remember, get they went seven games last year. And remember, Brooklyn won the first two and looked like they were on the way to winning the third one. Mm -hmm. And then this happened. Yeah, okay, Kyrie stepped. And yet... You know what? It came down to Kevin's mm -hmm. toenail on the line. His yeah. little toenail was on the line, or we might be having a different conversation. We yeah. would be having a different conversation. But I don't know, Skip. They're going to have to get somebody this rebound, Skip. You can't, because Milwaukee, they crashed the glass. They, and that's how they beat Phoenix. Remember, they were just killing Phoenix yep. on the glass last year in the finals. And that's sure. what they do. Giannis is going to Skip, you don't get 14 rebounds just by getting on the defensive end. You're getting some offensive rebounds also. Well, if Chris Middleton gets nine, you're going to have trouble. Yeah. yeah. Giannis had five offensive rebounds. Yeah. Killer. Guys, uh, there is some drama that we need to discuss <laughs> in Philly because what's happening with Ben Simmons, well, it's taken another turn. Yesterday, Simmons was kicked out of practice after he refused to participate in a defensive drill and the team suspended the guard for tonight's season opener because of it. Joel Embiid did not mince words about his teammate afterwards. Embiid told reporters he hadn't talked to Simmons and, quote, our job is not to babysit somebody, and I'm sure my teammates feel that way. Uh, this is messy. Shannon, where is this headed? <laughs> Where's the head, Skip? I've been trying to tell you this for the longest time. Yep. <laughs> and you say, oh, Doc can fix this. No, Doc is part of the reason why it got to this. A lot of this, Skip, look, this is, a lot of this has to do with Ben. Ben did not play well in the Atlanta series. And when he was down at his lowest, mm -hmm. he felt his superstar teammate and his coach piled on him. You can get the fans, Ben, you terrible, you suck, you're not any good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can accept that. That's outside. But the one thing I don't want to have happen is my is one of my teammates and my coaches yep. also piling on. Mm -hmm. So it made a situation, a bad situ situation, it made it worse. So this offseason, they go try to talk to him. I don't want to be here. I'm, I'm ready to move on. I think yep. we, well, I, I know for a, certain, for a fact we should move on. Yep. Doc, you know, comes out here to L.A. and talks and be yelling and screaming mm -hmm. and said, hey, you're on the contract, you're on the effing contract. Yep. Ben said, I get all that. But I want to play for anybody other than you. And I kept telling you, <laughs> Joel and B said, you know what? I've had it up to here with the PC stuff. Now, I'm about to tell you how I feel about this. Yep. He said, I ain't got nothing for this man. Yep. I, I paraphrase basically what he said, Skip. I'm not here to babysit. Now, Joel Embiid is telling you how he really feels. At this point, I don't care about that man. Hey, thank you. Okay. That's how he's felt for the longest. Mm -hmm. But he kept, oh, we, Ben and I, we won a lot of games. I want Ben back. We could do this. We were the number one seed. I said, that's bull jive. You know it was bull jive. I know mm -hmm. it was bull jive. Everybody in the locker room know it was bull jive. Yep. I know one guy for certain knew it was bull jive, yep. and that was Ben Simmons. Yep. Skip, I don't know. Skip, it's only going to get worse. When you ask the man, well, will you say, okay, okay, Ben, get in there for the series. No, nah, I'm good. No, nah, no, nah, seriously, Ben, go in the sub. I need you in there. No, nah, what part about that I'm good didn't you get? Mm. I'm not going in. I'm wearing sweatpants, and I got my cell phone in my pocket, so, 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 so Skip, I'm not going in. Right, Skip. Yep. So, how... So what do you do? You say, you know what? I'll just wait to the game. Now, Skip, it's going to be awful embarrassing. Yep. You on national television. You're like, all right, Ben. And you know Ben in the start lineup and Ben, and ben still got his warm-ups on. He's sitting on the bench. And you out there with four players. And Ben sitting on the bench with his hands on his knees looking like, man, y'all y'all, y'all minus a player. How is that going to look, Skip? 
I think you, you, Skip, you got to move him sooner than later, Skip. This okay. thing, Skip, it's getting worse. It's gonna get really, really, it's gonna get really, really messy when it really doesn't have to be. And I get it. Ben is under contract. I would, I don't like the way Ben is handling this. And I made it abundantly clear, Skip. I wouldn't have handled it like this. But how Ben Simmons would have hand, how handling it, and how I would have handled it, totally different. Yep. But Skip, I don't. It, it's beyond. It's unattainable. It's beyond repair. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing that can be said now because Joel Embiid has let it known over the last week and a half how he truly feels about this situation. So, Skip, it's time to move on. You're not going to get equal value for him, but you got to move it. Okay. I told you as late as I believe yesterday or maybe the day before, uh -huh. I was still holding out hope. And I know from inside they were holding out hope that this would slowly but surely blow over, uh -huh. that the air would get cleared, there'd be a little bit of forgive and some forget, and that they would slowly figure this back out <laughs> because the Sixers from the top down do not want to trade Ben Simmons. No. He's just too right. valuable. They believe in him. They have bought stock in Ben Simmons because they've got four more years of contract that they owe him yes. that they feel like he owes them. And that's a bargain. Okay. Consider where the salaries are going, that's a bargain what you got Ben Simmons under. Okay, I got it. He made yet another all-star team last year. He made first team all defense, and obviously he got the free throw demons, especially in the Atlanta series, and it got ugly. And to your point, the, the turning point, the irony was this was a quote from Joel Embiid right after that game seven in which he starts off saying the turning point in the game was when we had an open shot, we, we had an open <laughs> shot and we made one free throw, not shot by Ben Simmons, right. by Thibault, right? right? And we missed one and they came down and scored. That's how he summed up the game. Right. We had an open shot. Right. The turning point was, right. well, I also think that was the turning point in this whole yes, relationship yes, with Ben Simmons, yes. that was the turning point, yes. the flashpoint. That was one of it. And Doc said what he said. When he said what he said, and he says, I didn't mean it that way. I was trying to duck and dodge the question. Right. But it came across that I don't know if I can win with him as my point guard. Well, you, could you win with him maybe as your your forward right, or right, something right, else? Right. You know, besides make, him a, your, make him a point forward yeah, instead you, of a point could. guard. Okay, and at that flashpoint moment in Game 7, they were down two at home with 3.30 left, right. and you know the rest of the story. Correct. Meanwhile, quietly, Ben Simmons was holding Trey Young to 5 of 23 that night to keep the Sixers in the game. That's why management, all the way of Maury right. up to the owner, Josh Harris, they, they look at this like, God, he's just, he's right. too, we, we got to figure this right. back out because... We have lost all leverage. Right. We are now forced to give him away right. because nobody's going to give us equal value no. at this point. And the thing is, Skip, Ben Simmons, he can guard one through four. He, he can, can go a point guard, two guard, power forward, and a small forward. All right. Now to my point about yesterday. I was hanging in with my theory <laughs> that they were going to figure this back out slowly but surely until Joel Embiid opened his mouth again. <laughs> I've never heard anything like it. He is trying to blast this man out yeah. of town. And, and when he said, and I read you the quote, at this point, I don't care about that man. I was just happy that man didn't become that bleepity bleep, right, you know, because right. you know, that's probably what he was thinking. Of course. But at least publicly, he, he did refer right. to him as that man, right. right? Yeah. But you know where his mind was going at that Being point. Said, at this point in time, I, I drive him. I fly <laughs> him up out of here <laughs> as soon as you and, get him up out of the building. I thought it was significant and critical yesterday that it was reported they have not spoken a word to each other. And I'm not sure how people would know that, but it came from inside. Of course. That Embiid and Ben, and Ben's been there for three practices yes. now. How, how can you coexist in a locker room? You, you, don't, it, you said the other day, what, what would be the... Just, just the way of the locker room when he walked back in the right. door. What's up? You know, just right. something. Just but, just but, I, but I told you when he coming back yeah. in there. He already done told you, bro. I'm fool with you. Yeah. Don't speak to me. Well, they clearly avoided each other <laughs> carefully because they, they didn't even come close enough contact to give each other a right. nod, right? <laughs> yeah. Like what? You, what you been up to? Or so, just just some. How's the weather? Kind but of. Skip, that's the difference between the football and basketball. No, I, I got it. Because if think about what would have happened if a football player said, "Man." I don't care nothing about that man. Yeah. Bro, go step you to bro. You got a problem with me? <laughs> it, would, it would be. <laughs> That's as simple as right. that, Skip. And, and the team it, within the confines right. of the locker room would say, we're, we're going to get this out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to air this out. We got to yeah. get this out because right. this is not helpful for us winning no. what like, we're like trying if, to do. If you were the leader of the Sixers, hypothetically, yes. 
Shannon Sharp would have stepped up, the leader that you right. were, and you would have said, hey, time out. Yeah, we're going to call the team. Now, we, this we, is behind yeah. closed doors. Absolutely. No coaches, no Absol nobody. Absolutely. Hey, you and you. Right. Let's talk it out. Right. I, I want you to speak, then I want you to speak, right. and then we're all going to speak. Correct. Right? Yes, and absolutely. We're, we're going to air this thing right. out until we come to right. some grips with right. it. Right? I'm going to say, Ben, look, we understand that you don't want to be here. Right. And, but in the meantime, while you're here, until you are no longer here, let's try to make the best of this situation. Let's try to win as many games as you can. Uh, we understand you don't want to be here, yep. and, we, and we think at this present time that would be the best thing for everybody, for you not to be here. But until that day comes, can we all be professional? Yep. Can we all be adults and handle this the right way, go out here and win games until you're no longer here? Yep. But this doesn't serve anybody. The contention in the locker room, we, we got to defuse this. Because it's unnecessary. We, 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 we just petty. It's We're not petty. in the same box. No. We're making millions and millions of dollars. We're professional athletes. This is not how we're supposed to behave. Okay, so that's what Joel said right after the game, yes. at 7. And then just a couple of weeks back, September 30th, remember he referred to Ben's holdout as borderline kind of disrespectful. Right. Disrespectful. It's a shot fired. Yes. That just as Ben is thinking, well, maybe I'll go back in there. I don't know. And then he's like, borderline. Because Joel is looking at it like, hold on, bro. You need to be here getting up shots. Yeah. You, you're the last person that needs to be missing training camp. That's why he said it's borderline disrespectful. Somebody that needs work, you're the last person that needs to be not here. I okay. And then he caps it off <laughs> yesterday with the babysit I quote. I'm, I'm not here to babysit. So, so he's referring to his co-star as a big right. baby, right? Yes. Okay, it, it won't fly. It's, it's just going to end the situation to the point where if I'm management, I, I want to get Joel away from the media. Yeah, I want to do you. Hey, me. Joel, I need you to stop talking, bro. Yeah, just, just, I want we're, you to stop we're, talking. We're going to keep you out of <laughs> yeah. harm's yeah. way here. Yeah, Joel is unavailable for comment today. <laughs> well, seriously. Because then he said that, you know, he don't care nothing about that man. He does what he wants to do anyway. So, so now what are you going to do, Skip? You still think he's going to be there? <laughs> well, it's, it's all about Joel now. It's not about Ben. It's about this guy. Yeah. Because he is making it unfixable yes. because he's only pouring gasoline on the bonfire. It's already blazing. It is blazing. And he just <laughs> put every, every time he sits down to the media, and he, he does it so nonchalantly. Like, right. Well, I just, I, yeah. you know, and he just but, goes on. I'm not, I'm not here to babysit. So I, I don't care about that man. Sometimes, Skip, you know, we love guys when they're very candid yeah. and very matter of fact. But this is the one time you're like, I wish Joel wouldn't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I wish he, I still wish he would be PC so we can try to, uh, uh, try to mend fences. Yep. But Skip, ain't no more mending. Joel and Pete, Joel and Pete has just kicked the fence down. Well, okay, so Ben is suspended for one game, but then there's going to be another yeah, game. Yeah, they got 81 more. Okay. What you going to do? I, I don't know. I'll you know, be fascinated. You know what you're going to do? They're going to end up doing him like they did Andre Drummond, like they did Blake Griffin. They're going to say basically stay away until yep. we find a situation that's amenable, that's, that we can, that we can, yep. that makes sense I for us. I still think they're holding out hope that we'll tell you to stay away until you want to come back and do it right. Man, I can't believe that man. That man, that man, that man said he got nothing for that man. I know. I, I, I ain't his baby sit here. You just called a man a baby. <laughs> I, I mean, it was, to me, it was like borderline suspendable for, for yeah, Joel. Yeah, like, but, like Joel, you, you're the guy. You, you're causing the problem. The, you right? conduct your commitment yeah, to the team. That, it will, is it not? <laughs> yeah. It's so me. destructive, man. It, it is. And I just think, I think it's, Skip, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I didn't, I, I said at the time, we came here that Monday. Skip, I said, I don't know how you get past this. Because I've never, I've never seen anything like this. Mm -hmm. Having been in a locker room, and I understand the, the tensions, and I understand the egos, yep. and the personalities that's in a locker room. And when one player of that caliber says something yep. to, uh, about a player of that caliber, whew, you're ruffling some feathers. Mm -hmm. And when Doc said what he said, I'm like, oh, no, he's up out of there. Mm. Yeah, he up out of there. Ain't no way you you coming back from that, Skip. Sometimes you get to a point of no return. Mm. And, and what was it, the, uh, the term of crossing the Rubicon? Yeah. You going too far, Skip. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's see how Joel reacts tonight at New Orleans because he better oh, he'll live probably, up, man. He'll probably drop 35-15 on Valanchunas' okay. head. Well, he better. Because he's put himself in that kind <laughs> yeah. of situation. But, but Skip, he's still, he, he's Joel Embiid. He's still yeah. a, a, a you know, top 10 player. Yep. So I, I expect him to do what he does. Mm. Do what he does, but like, oh, surrounding all the drama, I don't know. I don't know where this ends right now. No mercy.
Well, don't miss your chance to win at $25,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money on the Fox Bet Super 6 app, where players have won over $5 million total. The Thursday night football jackpot has been hit two weeks in a row, and you could be next. So scan the QR code, download the app, answer six questions about the Broncos-Browns game for your shot to win. It is free to play, so don't miss out. Win some money. Good luck. Uh, we finally got to see it. LeBron in action. He did all he could to bring home the opening night win. He kicked off his 19th season with a game-high 34 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists. While he did shoot well from deep, going 5 of 11 from 3, he struggled from the free throw line, going just 3 of 6, and the Lakers ended up losing 121-114. Shannon, will you please give LeBron his first letter grade of the season? Uh, Skip, I thought he played well. I gave him a B minus. Um, B only, minus. Yeah, B minus. Wow. You can't you can't get an A if you lose. Mm. I, don't, I don't give a damn how well you play. I'm not giving you no A. I, mm. that, that's what you do. You you've been known to do that. Like you gave Kevin Durant an A for that game that game seven. He had a toenail on the line. Can't well, get an A. It was lose. over. Skip, you can't. It was get one a, of the great clutch shots in the history of basketball. Skip, you can't get an A if you miss one of the questions. If you just miss one, you can get a 99. You can get a 98, but you can't get a 100. Well, you give Tom Brady Fs when I think he's like a B plus. <laughs> yeah. and, and plus, I, I gave him the minor skip because going into the fourth quarter, he was plus 10. And he ended up minus two, so that means he tells me in the fourth quarter he was minus 12. But he had nine points. Mm -hmm. He didn't shoot the bad. He sh didn't shoot bad. He's three or seven, two or six from three. Um, he shows no sign of slowing down in year 19. I, it's one game, Skip. Look, I, I'm not going to get get carried away, but I think LeBron James is going to have an excellent season. Mm. He's the big, and I, all the questions are valid. Mm. You look at two of the last three years, he's missed significant times with freak injuries. The groin pull, he did a split on, I think it was Christmas Day, did a split against Golden State, and he missed 25, 26 games last year. On a Saturday afternoon, the guy dove into his ankle, he missed 26, 27 games with an ankle sprain. So it's well within for people to question, can he stay healthy in year 19? Mm. But I thought he got off to a great start. I can't give you an A. 34, 11, and 5. Shot the ball great. Um, rebound. So for me, he had most point, more points, more rebounds than anybody on the court. Mm. So for me, yeah, I gave him a B minus. Um, but I expect to see an A on mm. Friday. Mm. Expect to see an A on Friday sure against do. the Phoenix Suns. Yeah, yeah. Because he stunk against the Suns in those six but, games. But you know, would you give him an A? You know what? Since you say he's Tom Brady, as in the GOAT of basketball, we have to grade LeBron James opening night on the Tom Brady curve. That means he got a C for last night because I got to tell you, when they needed him most, he was nowhere to be found because you just said it in the fourth quarter. You just sort of slid it right under your carpet. I just thought I mentioned okay? it. He was a minus 12, and he played almost the entire yeah. way. He played 11 minutes and 35 seconds, so he barely went out at the end of the game. Right. Okay, was he stat padding at the end? I don't know, because it was getting a little bit out of hand, but that's there okay. You go, there you All right, go. well, he's playing high minutes in the fourth quarter, right? But see, uh, no, see, you said Tom Brady, but when Tom Brady played open at night, okay. I gave him a B. All right, C, because <laughs> if we could see what started happening in the fourth quarter, he missed four three-point shots that were crucial in a game that they led by two in the fourth quarter. Here's the first one. That's to put them up five, and he missed it. And then here we go with 8.46 left, and he, this is to cut it to one, and he missed it. And with 4.38 left, he, he's got another one to cut it to two, and he missed it. And then with 59 seconds left, he could at least have cut it to six, and he missed it. So he misses four huge threes. The last one wasn't that huge, but the first three were, were game changers. You know, where you're going to bring the house down because the crowd's on hair trigger to just explode yeah. on Golden State. And you miss the first three and then tack on the fourth miss. They're, they're huge misses. And in the midst of all those were two fourth quarter turnovers. And I'm not going to show you those, but they were, they're two empty trips that you have. So to me, when I look at the night, he had a rare hot hand. He was crazy hot for a, a lengthy period. Yeah, you think he period. started 7-7. Seven 7-7. Of seven. Seven of seven. So I'm going to give you that. But you got to bring this one home. And the truth was, you took 11 three-point shots. And I told you that last year he averaged a career-high 6.3 attempts per game. Right. Well, last night, 
He's, he's getting close to doubling his career-high attempts per game Well, you got to make him honor you, Skip. If, you gonna, if y'all going to sag off, y'all going to treat me like I'm Giannis, if y'all going to treat me like I'm Ben Simmons, I'm yep. going to shoot it. Okay, well, Draymond was guarding him at the first, and he treated him like a business partner because he was just uh, saying. there you go. Well, he, no, he, did. He, he did. He did. He was treating him like a business partner. It's like, man, shoot that. And LeBron rips it, okay. and then he rips another one. So, what, so what's, the, what's the game plan? What, what's the scouting report on LeBron? Just Don't hug up on him so he can go by you and dunk it. Play off him and make him take that shot. Okay. If he hits it, he hits it. Well, I think people are going to start to figure that it's now inverted, right? It's the, the pyramid has been inverted oh, okay. because now – all he wants to do is jack up threes, and if he gets hot, you're in trouble. But if you go out there and contest it a little bit more, maybe you're not in trouble. Maybe it's time well, come because on he has flipped the script because he doesn't drive the ball the way he yeah, used to. You hug up on me, and you'll see what we'll do. Okay, well, I, want, I would like to see that because where you need to dare him is to make free throws because he made three of six free throws. So he's turning into more and more of a three-point high-volume shooter. And I also told you that last year... He, he was actually, you know, he, he upped it to, what was 36. he, 36% yeah, last year. Well, well it, it was 110th of 156 qualified three-point shooters. So it, it's still way below average. You want to make, so, so you, basically what you want, you want, I mean, how fair would that have been if God would have made Steph Curry six foot eight, have the handles, shoot the three, and could jump like LeBron? How fair would that be? So you want LeBron to be six foot nine, 260 pounds, can shoot the three like Steph Curry, drive the ball like he does, and shoot free throws like Larry Bird. How fair is that? He no longer drives the ball the way he used to try to drive the ball. And he, he is chasing Kareem's all-time points record. I give you that. And, and I know you said it was like a co-goal, like we want to win a championship and pass yeah. Kareem. Okay, fine. But more and more you're shooting threes because threes count more than twos. And it's easier to get to Kareem shooting threes than it is driving and getting hammered at the basket and getting pounded yeah. and pounded Especially and pounded. Especially when you're not calling it and give me. Okay, well, he does I need you to reward me. If I'm going to drive the basketball to the, if I'm going to drive the ball to the hoop, yeah. Reward me by calling fouls. Uh, it, it is still fair to say that he has lost some athleticism at the rim. And again, not that tell. much, okay, not that much in year 19, but enough that he's no longer the greatest driver of the basketball I've ever seen. Yes, he is. He's not lethal at the rim. He used to be, when he just got a step on you, you, you were just done because he's going to tomahawk it or he's going to go up Did and you under. not see the man put his armpit over the rim last night? On the break? Yeah. It was okay. You saw that, his armpit. It didn't really move me. It didn't knock me off my chair. Oh. I, I didn't say, wow. I mean, it was just your standard, well, he gonna- ordinary you know, garden variety NBA dunk. He brought it back from, from Gardena. Did he? Yeah. I don't think he did. Yeah, brought it back. I think he brought it back from across the street. But he'll get, maybe. you remember last year he got yeah. Bielisa when he was in, he I think did. he was in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. He got it. Yeah, last but, year he was in Miami, maybe two yeah, years ago. Do, but we'll get him again. We're going to we'll, we'll, we'll pay you back. Okay, so LeBron James, who two years ago averaged 10.2 assists per game to yeah. lead the league. Yeah. He had five last night. It's wrong. It's, it's why they struggled. Because what? you need to take over, like Chris Broussard, we're going to have him on in just a minute here. Right. But he predicted that, hey, when it's time, fourth quarter, LeBron say, Russ, right. you've had enough. Right. Give me the basketball. Right. Well, if that's true, then you, you need LeBron to orchestrate and to get others open for three. Avery Bradley actually made a couple. Right. He's done that. Remember what he did right. to the Clippers that time? Yeah. He had the Avery Bradley Memorial game. But here's the thing, Skip. Assist is such a misleading stat because you're like, well, he's not assisting the ball. But Rondo went one of four and LeBron passed in the ball. Carmelo went three of nine. Malik Monk was two of five. So it wasn't, and Kent Bazemore was three of nine. Russ was four of 13. So yep. at the end of the day, guys got to make shots. I can pass you the ball all I want to. And if you don't make the shot, I'm not getting an assist. Yep. So guys guys made shots. I, 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 you know, and plus, he's not he's not going to be as ball dominant because Russ is going to have the ball sometimes. And Rondo played 20 minutes last night, Skip, and he's going to have the ball some. Mm. So he's not going to have the ball like he did when he led the, uh, the league in assist. I don't believe he's going to have the ball in his hands as much. But all I need guys to make shots, if they just make the shots, we'll still average, even though we won't have the ball as much, we'll still be somewhere around eight, eight assists tonight, okay. which we can live with. But what you can't live with was... He was as hot-handed, LeBron, as, as you'll ever see him for much of the game until it was time. And when it was time, I just showed you the four misses that were crucial to the outcome of the game. Well, and I'm going to remind you again, 
You're up two going to the fourth quarter at home. Who should take that home? The king should, yeah. the quote unquote goat, unless he's the phony goat. If he's the goat, you should take that game home against a, a Steph Curry who is struggling mightily. Yes. Right? Yes. What, what did Steph wind up in the five fourth quarter? He was 5 of 21 overall, Ooh. two of eight from three. Okay, fourth quarter, Steph is one of three. He scored five points, so he wasn't doing any Steph-like damage no, to you. No, no. So it's up to LeBron, take it home. Yeah. And he just kept doing what he'd been doing the whole game, which was hot-handed shooting, turnarounds, fallaways, and threes. And he misses four crucial ones that get you right back in, in the game. He still had nine points. Well, he did. He made two threes, so I'm going to give you that. But when you, you shot six in the fourth quarter alone, you, you averaged a career high 6.3 attempts per game well, we last year. Point three this year. Okay. Well, I'm just showing you why he deserved a C, and I think I just closed the case. No, no. And I think you no, agree with no. me. That was a C effort. No. Start to finish, that was a C by the GOAT. No, it, was, it, was, it was a B minus. Yeah. But I remember I gave Brady, even though he threw two picks, I said, you know what? After that performance, now nah, he okay, would have got What did he do? When it was time... Unfortunately, my team left 124 on the clock, and he goaded them. Yeah. Okay, well, did LeBron goat this game? But here's the thing. You'd have me if he goaded it. But here's the thing, Skip. The thing is with Brady, if guys are dropping pay, remember Giselle say, my husband can't throw it and catch it. <laughs> guys still, that was a great line, actually. Guys still have yeah. to catch the football. That was after the second Eli yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Bowl. In yeah. Indy. Yeah. In other words, in order for LeBron to get an assist, guys have to make the shot. I'm, okay, I, I got it. But it's upside down right now because – He's the one, as to, what were your opening remarks in this show? Buddy Heald, you had the deal in place. Yeah. Buddy Heald will make, he, he is a yes. clutch three-point yes. shooter because he was in, in his days at University of yeah. Oklahoma. Right. And so if, if you got Buddy Heald making clutch threes and LeBron orchestrating from the top, you got something. Right. Or if you want Rondo to try to bring you right. home, I'm good with that. Yeah. And have LeBron on a wing and Buddy Heald on a wing. Now you've got something. Mm -hmm. Maybe when Ellington gets right and he's back right. in, maybe that will help a right. little bit. I don't know that Kendrick Nunn is a deadly three-point shooter, but he's a scorer. Yeah, and, so he can play, and he can play defense. He can. At the end of the night, Skip, that's where they lost the well, game. It wasn't the shots, Skip, because you scored, you scored 29, but you gave up 38. 38 in the fourth quarter? That, you're, you're just running out of right. gas. So that, yeah. that's the difference in the ball game. It wasn't, you scored 29 points. Skip, if you average 29 points a quarter, you're going to win a lot of ball games. Yeah. But not if you give up 38 a quarter. Yeah. And, and they have three guys in the fourth quarter score seven, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 21 points right yes. there. And it's Jordan Poole, and it's Bielitsa, and it's Damian Lee. Yeah. Okay, who knew? Right. right. Okay, those are your stars of the night. And they gave up, Skip, they gave up three quarters, three of the four quarters. They gave up 32 in the first. 30 in the third and 38 in the fourth. Mm. That's defense. That ain't got nothing to do with assists. Mm. You go, is anybody going to guard anybody? Mm. C. I give LeBron a C. Go do some more homework, LeBron. <laughs> go work on your free throws, LeBron. That's all right. I'm going to win the bet, though. Yeah, what bet? 73%. 75%. No, no, no. Don't start dragging it up now. Well, right now he's at the big 5-0. <laughs> he won't be that long. Yeah. He'll be right. 80%. Come after after a Friday game. Yeah, okay. You try to convince yourself there? Mm -hmm. well, maybe we'll Russ probably Russ, Russ probably had like 20, 28 and six on Friday. Really? Yeah, we might get some do on that. Yeah, we might have to. <laughs> no mercy. Cowboy safety DeMonte Kazee was arrested early Tuesday morning for a DWI in a Dallas suburb. This came just hours after Mike McCarthy told the media that he'd advised his team to avoid any distractions and being smart during their bye week, adding, quote, they deserve this break. I have a lot of confidence and a lot of trust in those guys. Uh, Shannon, if you were Kazee's teammate, how upset would you be? I'd be very frustrated. Yep. Because the thing that I've always left with all the guys before we go on a break, don't be the guy. Mm -hmm. Don't you be the reason that we come back and we have to address the issues that we shouldn't have that's not football related. And DeMonte Kazee mm -hmm. is that guy. Yeah. He's the guy. For whatever reason. Now, Skip, I don't know. Now, I'm assuming. I, I, would like, I feel very comfortable. The Cowboys probably have a service that if, you had, if you've been drinking, you can call this service. I I'm sure they do. And with Jerry... I know Jerry, Jerry don't care. Skip, when we win, and especially you winning now, there's not, there's not anything that Jerry wouldn't give to these players. No. They're winning. Hell, he gives them too much and they'd be losing. Skip, when we were winning, there's not anything that we couldn't ask for Mike mm -hmm. Shanahan, our head coach, and he wouldn't get. Mike, we want to watch the fight. Got the fight. Mike, we want a clown juggling, riding the unicycle before practice. <laughs> we got it. 
So just call, and I know, Skip, sometimes players are like hesitant. Man, I don't want them to know that I've been out drinking. Well, what the hell you think they're going to think when you get a DUI? Mm -hmm. That's it. And I, Skip, you know what I'm saying? It's hard, Skip. When you got a nice ride, you got a Range Rover, you got a Mazel, you got an Aston Martin. The honey, they need to see me in this. Mm -hmm. I can't pull up in no car service. <laughs> then you don't know I got this whip. Mm -hmm. I need to pull up and you need to see me get up out of this. True. True. Bruh, All come, too true. Bro, come on. How many times? Forget the fact what you could have done to yourself, mm -hmm. but what about what you could have done to someone else? And this happened. Cowboys have had players. Josh Brent killed his teammate because yeah. he was a DUI. I think they had a, another a DB that ended up killing someone, a, a good, good rich, a good man or something, mm -hmm. a DB yeah. skip. Good rich. Yeah. How many times mm -hmm. must it happen before you like, and I, the, the, the Appley's mentality skip, it ain't gonna happen to me. Yeah, I remember the great Eric Williams. Yeah, Big Easy. Yep. He might have been their best offensive, offensive lineman. I was with Larry Allen. But, but Skip, easy. You know, you, you was there with Eric Williams. I played with Easy. I was when he on came. the flight back, the team plane back. It's a long flight, and it's a little sipping yeah. going on. And then you're going to drive home, yep. and you know the rest of the story. And it derailed his career. It, it did derail his career, and they stopped serving. I mean, on our plane. He had a wreck, yeah. Yes, yeah. but Skip, we, they stopped serving the players alcohol for the very reason because the player ended up having a little too much. Well, ended up getting... that did it with the Cowboys. That was the end of that. <laughs> but you, you, then they would smuggle on a little Yeah, they did smuggle, yeah. smuggle it on, Skip. Okay. But it, the thing is that you always say you're, having, you're playing so well. There's so much positivity going on with the Cowboys. There's so much good that you could talk about. And now Mike McCarthy is going to have to come back and he's going to have to address this. And the players are like, bro, we just told you. Don't be the guy. And here you are, you're the guy. Yeah. So McCarthy had just said that he, this is the day before, that he right. had told the team as they went on break, mm -hmm. we're not going to practice all week, but he said, I talked to them about distractions and what we don't want. We have an outstanding season going. Yes. Make sure that everybody is taking care of themselves and spend as much time as they can with family and friends. I have no issue with Kazee going out and having drinks. If he wants to drink to excess, that's fine with me. Right. No problem at all. Right. Just Blow off right. a little steam, but but you, you gotta you, you gotta use a car service. Yes. If if you have to Uber, you have to Uber, and I don't care what the honeys think or don't <laughs> think, because you owe this to your football yeah. team. You have a responsibility to your football team. Yes. And you said you would be very frustrated as a teammate. I'm like, bro, why? I, I, I was very frustrated as a diehard, lifelong fan last night when I heard this. And it's not the end of the world. It's just the start of the end of the world. Right. You know, it's just, right. it's a player who didn't take it seriously enough mm -hmm. that he's part of a, a united front here right. that's five and one and it's moving forward. And he is that guy. It's a little big thing. And hey, why are you celebrating? You the one that gave him the touchdown that almost cost you the game. What the hell are you celebrating? You should have been just drinking water. He made the biggest mistake yeah. of the game. He canceled out Trevon Diggs' pick six on the next play by taking the worst possible. It's like he yes. couldn't even see the, the ball because Well, he might have been drunk on the field here, Skip. He I took an angle know. like that. I don't know. So just to be clear about this, just to have some perspective and to be fair about it, I wrote books about Tom Landry's Cowboys, and I wrote books about Jimmy Johnson's Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And both of those teams, in many ways, led the league in hell-raising and law-breaking, yes. especially God's coach, Tom Landry. Yeah. That's the name of my first book. Those teams just were completely out of control. And I'll just throw out a few names. Hollywood Henderson, yeah. who I knew very well, mm -hmm. who actually played Super Bowl XIII with a vial of cocaine attached to his the, the, to his, the back of his pants. <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, Half time, huh? Yeah, well, uh, between... <laughs> Series. He's over on the bench using his cocaine. And again, you'll have to look these up for longtime fans. They might know, but Lance Rensel and Raphael Septian, it was just completely. Raphael Septian might have been the worst. It might have been the worst. Lance Rensel wasn't much. But, much anyway, better. he wasn't. Trust me. Then we go to the 90s Cowboys, and obviously our friend Michael Irvin, and then Nate Newton, and we just talked about Eric Williams. We can go on mm -hmm. and on. So they all had their problems, but they were supremely talented football teams. Right. And they had that switch that they could flip. When it was time, Right. they just played. Mm -hmm. And they played at supremely high talent levels. Right. And they won Super Bowls, obviously, in the 70s and the 90s. So I, I'm, I'm not trying to be hypocritical about this year's team, but this is different. This is new. Right. They're on the verge. They're right. just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think many people saw this coming. Nobody saw five and one. Even I didn't think no. they would be five and no, one. No, they did. So you, you have to cherish it. You have to respect it. Right. And you have to honor and protect it. Right. And you can't start with this. Right. On, on the first night out after you're on a big break where you're not, you don't even have to go to the facility all week. And what do you do? It's three o'clock in the morning and you're on Highway 121 in the next suburb over from Cowboy Headquarters. And that happened. Right. You're pulled over and you fail a field sobriety but damn, test. Skip, that's the cowboy. I mean, I thought everybody loved the cowboys in mm -hmm. Dallas. You, you supposed to be. You know what? That is the problem. What if I always told you about Dallas, Texas, and I lived there for whatever it was, 17 years? Yeah. It is Hollywood, Texas. It can be. I know Las Vegas is Sin City. Dallas can be Sin City, right. too, if you're a Dallas cowboy, mm -hmm. because. I still believe, and, and I know Denver's up there in, in hero worship of the Broncos, yeah. as you well know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think Washington hero worships its football mm -hmm. players, and we can go on and on. Everybody gets, it, it felt to me, because I've traveled and covered games in all right. these cities, Dallas puts its players on a pedestal oh, yeah, 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 unlike yeah. any other yeah. city. So yeah. you know what that means? Yeah. Temptations are great because right. everybody wants to see and be seen right. rubbing elbows with a Dallas Cowboy. And they will do anything for a Dallas. What, what do you need? What do you want? Right. I can get you this. Right. I can get you that. I can get you this. Whatever you want, I'll get it for you. And you know and I know that is a recipe for disaster. Well, you might have should have told him because they looked at it like, man, you're too little to be a Cowboy. You ain't no Cowboy player. <laughs> He's 175. You're right, right. They're like, man, you ain't no Cowboy player. What, what position do you play? <laughs> Nah, you ain't no cowboy player. We got to take him in. Well, Let's I, get, but, but why? Mm. First of all, hold on. You said he got the whole week off? Mm -hmm. Mike, you owe me some time. Mm. We wasn't getting the whole week off. Really? Hell no. Nah. You had to practice. You got Monday, Tuesday off. You practice Wednesday. We practice half a day Thursday. Really? Yeah. Yes. You thought we got the, the whole week? You, you talking can, from Monday all the way to Monday? They, oh, absolutely not. Yeah, I don't think it. I think it's Monday through Friday, no practice. So... That you know, wasn't you happening. You can go wherever you want to go. That was not happening. Okay. We got four days. All right. And I'm also worried about COVID because it's still out yeah. there. You got to be careful. Yes. This is where you sort of leave your little bubble, whatever it is. And you drop your guard. <laughs> I, know, you, yeah. you, I mean, you got to have, your, you know, you basically, you're like, look here. You got to just keep it locked down until after the season. Hopefully the season ends like we wanted to end. And then, hey, mm. Skip, I ain't going to lie to you. I, when the Super I'm throwing caution to the wind. Yep. So you know, ain't no sense to be lying, Skip. Up there in Minneapolis, Jenny's Vikings are all, they're just kind of saying, hmm, hmm, interesting. You know? Waiting. Oh, yeah, first cousin. Waiting. First cousin been dealing, Skip. Yeah, yeah he's been dealing. He's been we dealing. could give him yeah. that. We've had some ups and downs this season, but maybe we've turned a corner. It's kind of the life of a Vikings fan. I'm used to it by now. And, you know, Skip, maybe we'll have a bet in a couple weeks. I don't yeah. know. We'll see about uh, how confident I'm feeling. Oh, you said it was Jeans Proof. Remember, you said it was Jeans. I, I, I just need to know if my quarterback is going that, to be able you to play. I understand I that. Jinx. Yes, you did. He got a calf injury. I don't Remember, you were talking I didn't about, do that. You, I yeah, you do. You do. They Jeans Proof. I just said they're going to win. Did no, they win? Said, yes. They Jeans Proof. Did I Jeans their done. victory? No. I said, Skip, you're going to Jeans them. Stop I talking did not. No Jeans And now you look at Kazee. No mercy. The Lakers opening night wasn't as smooth as they'd have liked. After leading for all three quarters, the wheels kind of came off for L.A. in the fourth as the Warriors went on to win 121 to 114. LeBron and AD both had over 30 points, but Westbrook finished with only eight points in his Lakers debut. And afterward, LeBron said he's not worried at all about Russ. Talking it up to, quote, first game jitters. We're now joined by First Things First co-host Chris Broussard. So, Chris, how do you explain Westbrook's poor start here? Jen, I think it's simple. For the first time in Russell Westbrook's 13-year career, one of two things was not true. He, he didn't have the ball in his hands primarily, so he wasn't able to be ball dominant, do what he wants, and have everybody around him play off him. Or the lane was not open. The one time in his career where he didn't have the ball in his hands, he was in Houston, right? And Harden had the ball. What did the Rockets do? They traded away Clint Rick Capella, Capella, their center, so the lane would be wide open. All right? So R Russ, even though he didn't have the ball, at least when he got it, he could drive. All right? Last night, the lane was clogged. You saw those highlights. Golden State had several defenders in the paint or Dwight Howard or DeAndre Jordan or Anthony Davis was in the paint. So Russ didn't have the driving lanes. And those are tough adjustments to make when you can't shoot. 
and Russ can't <laughs> shoot. And so, they, you know, they can talk all they want. And LeBron said it, and Frank Vogel said it after the game. We want Russ to be Russ. We want Russ to be aggressive. Gross. Russ being Russ is having the ball in his hands, right? And everybody playing off him. That's not what's best for the Lakers. The Lakers are smart. We see LeBron is doing what he does, and he's got the ball for the most part. That's good for the Lakers. The best way for the Lakers to play is through LeBron and AD and everybody else, including Russ, you get yours off of them. And they're going to have to figure out how to play off of LeBron and AD because that's what's best for the team. Guys, I, look, this big three, it is a big three. I expect Russ to be named onto this all top 75 players of all time team within the next two days. So it's a big three. But they're all not going to average 20 or more points. And Russ is going to be the one that's out. Yeah. I think Russ might average 17 points, maybe even 16 points a game. Be, and he's going to have to adjust to being the third fiddle. And now, when he, he and LeBron, I think they need to stagger their minutes, let Russ have that second unit, then he can be Russ. <laughs> and then when LeBron's out there with him, he can get his, you know, push it in transition get early offense, but in the half court, it's got to kind of be LeBron's decision-making. So that's what I think needs to happen. And if Russ can accept that, then it can eventually work over time as they get used to each other. But if he can't, if he's like, man, I got to get my numbers, I got to shine, you know, just as much as LeBron and AD or close to it at least, then it could be problematic. I agree with everything you said, but I also believe he was pumped up. I mean, he grew up in L.A., Purple and gold, Lakers. If you grew up in L.A., Lakers is it. Uh, he saw the parades. He saw the championships. He saw Shaq and Kobe. Yep. So, that, you know, he knows that. So now I'm here. I'm in purple and gold. I'm the starting point guard, even though it might be a name only, Skip. But I'm starting for my hometown team. That means a lot to him. And we already know that Russ plays close to the edge. He plays on a mission. He's well, always... He has in the, the he last has, night. Right. Yeah. He, he's always been bull and child shot, no yeah. skip. So he's always playing. Right. But I, he can't play like that now because this, for the first time in his career, he has two guys that are better than him. Russ has never been the third option. Russ has never been the third best player. I don't believe at any level he's ever played where he's the third best player on his team. He, he might have been in OKC early on, but he wouldn't know that. Like, like Harden's coming off the right, bench. Right, Treat him like he was second. Yes. Right. So, yes. and so right. that's what, and, and you're right, but that, it's going to be difficult. And it's hard, Skip. It's hard when you played one way. I take myself, Skip, being in Denver, knowing I'm going to get five, six, seven targets a game, and then going to Baltimore knowing that I might get one, might get two. But well, you can be big play Shay. And so your ego is okay. That, that was it, right? Skip. Okay. But I was like, okay, when I get my opportunity, Chris, I just got to cash it in. I'm not going to get these opportunities where I get a chance to get a 100-yard game because John is feeding me the ball. We're a running team. We're playing for one to two plays a game, and we're going to turn it over to our defense. But you have to be willing to accept okay, that but role. But your ego is still intact. Yeah, yeah. It I'm, was. I'm you're fine because you're going to get your big play Shay play. Because, right? Skip, I felt that if – me winning a championship would do more for my resume than me putting up numbers because I know I could put up numbers, but I've always put up numbers. Yep. Winning a championship because now I'm winning a championship and I don't have John as my quarterback. I don't have Mike Shanahan as my head coach. Yep. So that's going to be saying something about, okay, well, he possesses leadership skills. But I just think Russ is going to have to find a way. Like you said, I believe the second unit staggered their minutes and Russ is going to have to accept I'm not going to be the Russell of old. Mm. I'm not going to be Russ in OKC. I'm not going to be him in Houston. I'm not going to be him in, 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 uh, in with Washington. Mm -hmm. For the last five years, triple-double, Skip, that's a thing of the past. Mm. And I think he's going to have to uh, accept that. I think 15, 7, and 7 might be more realistic. Uh, be, might be something that I think is attainable for him, Chris. Good. But AD and uh, AD and, 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 and Braun is going to have to be where it's uh, the bread is buttered. But we can't have eight, nine other guys just have single digits. I don't care. You can't. They got 67 and 22. But nobody else scored in double figures. Okay, but the focal point is on number zero. He understands right? that. Well, he's going to have to accept right. it. He understands that skill. So, to me, I saw Russell Westbrook last night for the first time face an identity crisis on the basketball yeah. floor. He has been under fire, mm. often from me. I've called him nothing but a solo act stat machine, and I love to watch him, but he does not fit with LeBron and AD. Right. 
So he goes out last night like, I'm going to show you. But usually when it's I'm going to show you, it's a thousand miles an hour right. to the basket. Right. He had to show me or others, uh, I got to be tentative. I got to be uncertain. I, I got to be not quite myself. He was damned if he did and damned if he did not because these are adjectives I never thought I would associate with Russell Westbrook because he had to show the world last night, uh, watch this, I, I can defer to LeBron, I can sacrifice. And he, he did for the most part, and it was kind of hard to watch because his body language was so unsure of what he was doing. And when he did drive it, he drove it sort of 75 percent-ish, and then he's begging for calls that he's not going to get because it didn't look like the same old Russ going to the hoop, right? right? But, and another thing, Chris, there's no way Anthony Davis can play damn near 39 minutes and not have a foul. That's unacceptable. How you play, Skip, how you play 39 minutes and you don't have one foul? You mean to tell me you ain't, you ain't hacked one person, you didn't run over one person, you didn't get one charge? I need more. I need more out of AD because mm. I know he got it in him too. Mm. And he's going to give me more. Guess what? He's going to give me more. So what did I tell you about Russell Westbrook yeah. earlier in this show? He needs to turn into Manu Ginobili because Popovich convinced Manu to come off the bench. To really kind of mid-career, you, you got to lead our shock troops. Mm -mm. And he was the best at it. <laughs> he would come in mid-first quarter and change the game. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, the second unit was the shock troops. Right. Led by Manu, who played 1,000 miles an hour, often out of control, like Russ plays. But it would he would make things happen. He would change the whole tenor and flow of the game. Well, that's what Russ needs to do, but he's not going to accept that. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to swallow that. Russ go come off the Russ go come off the bench, uh, Chris. Yeah, hey, you remember when Melo was first? That was first brought up to yeah, Melo and OKC. Right. Yeah, he was like, "Yo, P, they want me to come off the bench." <laughs> I think that's how Russ would be. I think. Look, and I don't know if you guys talked about this earlier. I also was stunned that they started DeAndre Jordan. I mean, when I saw them put that team out there, I was like. What? You got one shooter in Baysmore who's pretty good shooter. Now, obviously, LeBron was on fire. Right. And if, if that's really the new LeBron, I mean, then all bets are off. But, I, you know, I think he's going to come back to the mean, probably shoot 36, 37 percent from three. So I was surprised that they had so little shooting on the floor. But they were big. And that size can be a problem for teams. But I don't think they played big right. offensively. And so they couldn't guard. We know they've been a great defensive team, but they couldn't guard Golden State, which was much smaller, but there was constant player movement, constant ball movement. And the reason the Lakers were up early was just because Golden State was missing shots. It wasn't because of great Laker defense. It was because they were missing shots, and Steph really never got hot all night. And so they, if they're going to go big, then I think they need to play big and punish teams inside, yes. wear them down, and things like that. Or otherwise, put AD at the five, which I don't think is a bad idea. LeBron theoretically at the four. And, you know, and go smaller so you can at least stick with these teams that are going to be constantly moving well, and shooting the three. Well, AD definitely should have played the five last night. Now, if you want to play somebody like Philly and you want to put DeAndre Jordan or start Dwight Howard on Joel right. Embiid so he doesn't eat up all the energy from AD, okay, I agree with that. If you want to put him on Valanciunas, if you want to, they play Valanciunas or they play a big like that, Skip, and you want somebody so they don't exhaust AD on the offensive end, okay, I agree with that. But when you start Kevon Looney, if AD can't hold his own against Kevon Looney right. without getting tired, well, I don't know what to tell you. Mm. <laughs> so, Chris, back to your man and Shannon's man, LeBron James. You said he was very hot-handed. He was on a rare hot streak yeah, you at it. least until the fourth quarter. But I want to remind everyone that LeBron wound up taking 11 threes last night. Last year, he averaged a career-high 6.3 three-point attempts per game. That was a career-high. He almost doubled that last night. And yet, when it was time to be hot-handed, when they had a two-point lead going into the fourth quarter, and it was time for the King to take them home, he could not take them home. Because I would like to show you quickly the four three-point shots LeBron missed at crucial junctures of the fourth quarter. Here's the first one, and this is to go up five early in the fourth quarter, and he misses. 
And then here we go with the second one. This is to cut it to one. And then with 438 left, he's got another one to cut it to two. And he misses all those. And then this one didn't matter that much. With a minute left, he could have cut it to six. Never know. But he missed that one. So he reverted, as Chris said, to the to the mean, you know, like he went back to sort of who he really is because he's a career 34.5% three-point shooter. Well, you know when he had that headband on the Miami, he shot 40% one time from the three. I expect okay. that to come back. You hadn't seen that headband in well, a very long time. Every once in a while, he goes magical. He, he'll just, he had one night in Miami, remember on a Monday right. night, he went against Charlotte? Oh, uh, yeah, you remember that? Who was in attendance? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, goat. yeah, the no. Uh, you're like, I'm, they're the new goat in town. <laughs> Well, it happens every once in a while, but it's rare. <laughs> and then when they needed him to bring it home, the king played last night in the fourth quarter. He almost played all 12 minutes. Right. Okay? When is what we, I told you he's going to be somewhere around yeah, 36, 37 minutes. He can't fall in love with that three. Nope. He can't fall in love with Cannot. that three. Cannot. Yeah. Unless you can yeah. stay in love with well, him. Well, they, well, they dare them. Right. They don't, they don't believe we for real. They don't believe me in the what? three. We, we, they don't believe we for real, Chris. So what we supposed to do? We got to show them our if love I'm, the truth. But I would rather... If you were guarding LeBron, Shannon, you rather him shoot the three than go right. to the hole. Yeah, but I'm gonna play off. So I'm gonna dare him to that, shoot it. You know? But yeah, but I'm gonna dare him to shoot it. I'm right. not finna hug up on him so he can blow by me and dunk it. No mercy. Last night, the Astros exploded in the late innings to even the ALCS at two games apiece, setting the table for a pivotal Game 5 with the Boston Red Sox. Coverage begins today at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific, only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Well, the Ben Simmons drama in Philly is taking another turn, and it's not a good one. Yesterday, Simmons was kicked out of practice after he refused to participate in a defensive drill, and the team suspended the guard for tonight's season opener because of it. Joel Embiid did not mince words about his teammate afterwards, and Embiid told reporters he hadn't talked to Simmons, and, quote, our job is not to babysit somebody. And I'm sure my teammates feel that way as well. Chris Broussard still with us. Chris, what happens next here? Yeah, well, let me start by saying this, Jen. I think Doc Rivers did the right thing. And I have no problem whatsoever with anything Joel B said. I mean, you're grown men. At, at a certain point, it's like, man, forget you. We got a season to yeah. play. All right, you do what you got to do, but we, we going on. Um, here's what should happen. And let me, I'll be the first to admit, I don't think Ben Simmons has it in him to do this. But what he should do is go sit down with Daryl Morey and Doc Rivers and say, look, I still want to be traded, but I'm going to put on a smiley face and go out there and play the best I can. I understand I've hurt my trade value, and I'm going to go out there and ball, and I want you in good faith to continue to try to trade me. I'm going to do my part by playing great on the floor. You do your part, please, by looking to trade me. Then meet with his teammates, apologize, say, look, guys, Let's put everything in the past. I'm here now. I'm ready to ball. Let's go out and win some games. Then hold a press conference before he plays the game. Because if he, if he goes out and just shows up in a game, the Philly fans, I think, will torch him. I've talked to several people down there, and they're like, man, Philadelphia fans will chew this dude up if he steps on the court right now with all this going on. So hold a press conference before you play. And, and to me, be a man and say, look, I'm sorry for the way the last four months have gone. I was upset mostly with myself because I didn't play up to my potential in the playoffs. But I was upset that we lost in the second round. We shouldn't have lost that early. And, yeah, I was upset with some of the things I heard after we lost from our organization, from our locker room, from fans. I was upset. But I didn't handle it the right way. All right. Now I got to look in the mirror and I've got to just be the best player I can be because that's what I can control. And I'm going to go out there now and play my best and help the Sixers win basketball games. And when he is asked by the media, because he would be, does this mean, Ben, that you no longer are seeking a trade and you want to stay in Philly? Just say, I don't know what the future holds, but right now I'm a Sixer. And I'm trying to help the Sixers win as many games as possible. And leave it at that. And then go out and play. Because, guys, Ben has ruined his trade value. And I'm not, look, it's 30 teams. I'm sure somebody will take him. There are a couple teams I talked to that like him still and would take him. But 
he there are other guys I've talked to from teams that say, look, I'm not so sure this dude isn't still stuck in a mental block. Like what we saw in the playoffs, how do we know that he's still not in that in that space, right? And so he he has to go out and show that he's over that mental block that we saw in the playoffs. And also his lack of professionalism is rubbing some people the wrong way. Because it's like, if I trade for him, who's to say he won't act up here? He won't do the same thing here. So I think that, again, I don't think he'll do it, but I think that's what he should do. Because the only other choice is to just continue to mope and go through the motions. Because God, if, if he were to continue doing what he did yesterday, he's in danger of losing his money because he refused to work. Like Doc said, look, get in. And he said, no. So you're refusing to work now. So I'm not paying you if you refuse to work. So you're going to have to play one way or the other. And so you might as well try to play the best you can and try to get your attitude in order so that you can up your trade value. You know what, Chris, you're right. If I'm Ben Simmons, I call a team meeting. I say I want all the players and I want all the coaches to have this team meeting. And I'm going to go around, I'm going to point to Danny Green. I say, you cool, you cool, F you, Joel B. You cool, you cool, you cool, F you, Doc Rivers. I say, now that we done cleared that out the air, we good. Now, here's the thing. Let me ask you a question, Chris. How much did Doc Rivers help Ben Simmons trade value by saying, I'm not sure we can win a championship as our starting point guard? Did that help or hurt Ben Simmons' trade value? When Joel Embiid said the turning point of the ball game is that when we had a shot for two and we ended up making one and they came down and made another shot, how much did that help his value? See, for me, I, I agree with you. Ben, ben Simmons, Joel Embiid is finally speaking his heart on what he truly feels and how what he truly thinks of Ben Simmons. He told you that. He got angry. The angrier he gets, the more truth spills out of his body, Skip. And so for me, and I said this at the time it happened, I came out here the next, that Monday after that Sunday. I said, this is up. This is over. I said, I understand athletes having been in a locker room, having been a pretty good player in a locker room. I understand we take the slightest. That's why you have to be so careful on what you say about a player in your own locker room. You had to be very, very careful. And the greater the player, the more careful you have to be. It's almost like you're stepping on eggshells. When you offer explanation, well, what happened? You better take the onus on yourself and don't mention that other player because he's going to take it as a slight. Ben Simmons, in the video that we showed earlier, guys, Ben Simmons had, I don't care. I don't give a F about this practice, about anything right. going on in Philly. Mm. And it's not a good situation. He's handled this very unprofessional. That's not how I would have handled it, Skip. And mm. I've made that abundantly clear. But to, uh, uh, to Chris's point, I don't know if he has the maturity right now. He's made it abundantly clear. This is not a, it wasn't a holdout. This is that get me the you know what out of here. I'm done with y'all. I'm done. Skip, let's just move this. Can we just move this on, Skip? Mm. Can we just move this on? You're going to take a loss. You never get equal value. Do you actually think they got equal value for James Harden in Brooklyn? The Brooklyn that the Houston Rockets got equal value for James Harden. The, uh, uh, the Cleveland didn't get equal value for Kyrie. When you give up a superstar, you're not going to get equal value because they know he wants out. So they're going to under... If I know you want to trade, get rid of something, Skip, yep. I'm not paying you full price for it. It's just a bad situation. It's a bad look for Ben. I, I hate it for the, uh, the Sixers, but this all started because Ben needs to get better. Ben got to take... Ben's going to have to face facts now. Mm. He's going to have to get better as a player, Skip. But Doc, when at his lowest moment... Doc and Joel and B piled on him, mm -hmm. which I thought was unnecessary. Mm. That obviously started it. But <laughs> to Chris's initial point a long time back, if I can remember exactly what it was. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> the option was here, and I was told from the top of the organization, they hoped that Ben would do what Chris just proposed, that he would be a pro, that he would come back and realize in good faith, we'll keep trying to trade you, but we need you to do what you do. We need you to suck it up, swallow some of your pride, and just play basketball the way you do. He's, he's never been a thousand mile an hour guy anyway. No. He, he sort of plays at the same no. half speed all the time, and it works because he is so gifted and has such high IQ in basketball. He's such a great defender. Made the all-star team last year, made first team all defense. 
Little known fact in that game seven, when he was the culprit, he was demonized. He held Trey Young to five of 23 shooting, and that kept him in the game. So that's how valuable they deem him. So why didn't Doc mention that instead okay. of saying he didn't well, know if he could win a championship with a point? You know, heat of battle, sometimes things spill out after you've lost a game you should not lose. And Doc has been on the hot seat. He was on the Clipper hot seat after they blew a 3-1 lead, and here they lost to an underdog Atlanta team in seven games, and the game seven was at home. So Doc was at fault, and Joel just spilled his <laughs> guts when he said the turning point was we had an open shot. Well, everybody saw that, everybody knew that, and we didn't really need Joel to, to pour gasoline on that fire. So Chris, my point from the start of today's show has been that the biggest problem for the Sixers right now is not Ben Simmons, it's Joel Embiid, <laughs> because he won't stop talking. And where I went a different direction from you, Chris, early in what you said was, you thought it was great that Joel is spilling his guts and speaking his heart. It is killing this team because he he is making this unfixable. Yes. Because when he goes, I'm not a babysitter, and then that, that last line, at this point, I don't care about that man. I was afraid he's going to use something else yeah. in there, but <laughs> I don't care about that man. Well, once you go there... The bridge, it, it, it was on fire, yeah. and it just burned all the way to the right. ground. So all of a sudden, your co-star is saying, I'm out. Right. And so the reason Ben can't play anymore in Philadelphia is not Ben, it's Joel. Right. So, so now they're stuck because his value just hit bottom yeah. because you're going to have to just give him away if you're going to yeah, Not only did Joel and B burn the bridge down, he just dumped 100 crocodiles in the water he underneath the bridge he that did. he burned down. I, I and here's the thing. Ben Simmons is saying, how am I going to go play for a coach who doesn't believe he can win a championship with me, Chris? So how do you explain that? How do you work for a man that doesn't well, believe he, me? All right, I, I'll say this, Shannon. You know this, too. All season long, including into the playoffs, Yes, Doc Rivers bent over backwards he did. He did. to support Ben Simmons. Yeah. I thought he actually embarrassed himself. Like, when, when there was, when people started the bringing throws. up, man, they're hack of ben in, right? Yep. Hack of ben, yep. maybe you should take him out. Doc actually said, if you think we should take him out, yep. you don't know basketball. You don't know basketball. Yep. And then a few games later, Doc's <laughs> taking him out. So, I mean, all year long, he backed up Ben. Hey, he, he does all these other things well. I'm not worried about him shooting. You guys don't know what you're talking about. All that. And then finally, yes, the dam broke, and he let it out. But he only said what everybody knows. But you he only, Everybody knows. And can you win with this dude? I don't know. Now, Joel, I get it. Look, but I'm, I'm, I'm like, we men. All right, at some point, I'm just like, enough of the foolishness. Enough of the childishness. I can't take, because Ben is being childish. He's being a baby. Like, he didn't have it in him to go in there like Jimmy Butler. So he said, you know what, I'm just going to mope. You know, when I was a little kid, my parents, my mom made me mad. She punished me. I would go in there and I'd mope and I ain't talking to her and... You know, I'm going to do what I got to do, but, you know, <laughs> she's going to see that I'm mad. That I was seven years old doing that. Ben's a grown man. Come on, man. And I look, I get it. Maybe it's not the best PR, but there's a part of me that's like, man, you tell it like it is, Joel. Let's be men up in here. Okay. So, I, like, I'm with that. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that, Joel. But, but, Chris, you know as a coach, you always, even though you might want to tell the truth, and I agree with you, he backed up. Uh, uh, ben Simmons for a long time. Oh, you don't know basketball. We're going to play Ben. But here's the thing. You can paint a thousand pictures and never be considered an artist. Tell one lie. What are you, Chris? You're a liar. So the mere fact that even though he had said 25,000 positive things about Ben Simmons, it was the one thing that Ben Simmons heard that said, that's it for me. And that's human. That's how we are. That's human nature. You sign, Skip Bayless can sign a thousand autographs, stand at the movies and th sign a thousand. The one that he doesn't sign, man, Skip Bayless wouldn't sign my autograph. Forget the thousand that he just signed, he didn't sign mine. So Ben Simmons said... By the way, I've never not signed one. I, I know. Ahead. You, you, yes. uh, John Hancock. Yeah. That's all you do. You, you, you try to, he tried to make me look bad. You know, your boy, oh, Skip, sign it. He, he, he. 
<laughs> no, man of the people, the people's <laughs> champ, the be. people's champ. Oh. But, now, but, now, but Chris, you're right. Doc has been over backwards. Doc has been more said a lot of positive. But it was the one time that Skip is that when we were down at our lowest, is that when we really need you to pick us up. And when Ben was at his lowest, he felt that his star, his his co-star Joel Embiid and his head coach piled on to a situation yeah. when I was at my absolute lowest. Yeah. No mercy. And I won't back down. The defending champs got out on the right foot last night. Giannis picked up where he left off with 32 points and 14 rebounds in the 127 to 104 win over the Nets. Kevin Durant also had 32 points, but Brooklyn was out rebounded by 10 overall and eight on the offensive side. So, Chris, was this game more about what the Bucks did or what the Nets did not do? It was more about what the Nets didn't do. Now, Milwaukee looked great. Giannis looked like the best player in the world. They were on fire from three early. They played with the championship swagger. Like, they looked like they just got better because they're more confident and they have that hardware. So they were great. But this was the Nets being disjointed, having no chemistry, uh, not understanding their roles yet, ha not having a rotation set, and just not being familiar with each other. The, the five of the six guys that they brought off the bench were new. And I'm, I'm including LaMarcus Aldridge in there because he only played a, briefly with them last year. And then that was only the seventh game that Harden and KD have played together without Kyrie in Brooklyn, without Kyrie. Oklahoma City, that was eons ago. Harden was a different type player, so I don't even count that. So they have to get to know each other. They have to understand their roles. Prime example to me, if Harden plays the game he played last night with Kyrie on the floor and KD, it's great. 28 and 8, you're running the show, you're getting everybody involved, that's all good. But without Kyrie, I need you to be a little bit more like the James Harden in Houston, where you're going to be aggressive, you're not deferring as much to KD, you out there like you the best player on the team, and obviously running the point and getting other guys involved. So I just think they have to figure these things out but I still have confidence that once they get it figured out, they can win it all. But we're not, we can't pretend like Milwaukee is not legit. I mean, I mean, uh, they're going to guard anybody? Legit. Are they gonna, so are they going to get any taller between now and the next time they play Milwaukee? Are they going to be able to defend any better between now and the next time they play Milwaukee? Mm. I don't so know. You're saying they missed DeAndre Jordan? No, 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 Skip. But look, they're a small, they're, they're a small <laughs> team. And the they're one small. Thing, the one thing they're that small. Milwaukee does is that they pound you on the glass. They get set. Now, remind you, there's no Bobby Portis. There's no DiVincenzo. There, there, there were the two guys that really contributed, especially Portis, in that series against Phoenix. He played great down the stretch. I believe it was more about Milwaukee. Milwaukee... They have unlocked Giannis. He got this title. I'm looking at this man. He's looking at that ring, and he's looking up there as they drop that banner. He's a different animal. Every guy that's won the title, after they won the title, they became different men. From Jordan to LeBron to KD to now it's Giannis' turn. He's going to be a different animal. The NBA, you got hell on your hands dealing with him from here on out. Mm. Okay, I hear everything you said about Milwaukee, but I am with Chris Broussard on this. It was about what the Nets didn't do. You thought that the, the Nets would come out and take this game over because you thought the home team would be distracted by the ring ceremony. Yeah, they all right? that bling, all that diamonds in there. Yeah, who could? It happens. You get blinded by the diamonds. <laughs> yeah. And instead, yeah. Kevin came out lifeless last night, and they feed off Kevin Durant, obviously, when there's no Kyrie. And he was. Yep. They, they were just disconnected and discombobulated, and I was shocked because the Bucks just took the game over from the start. And Kevin seemed a little out of sorts, and maybe it's because his best friend in the world is still refusing to get vaccinated. Maybe just the distraction of Kyrie hanging over Kevin's head got to him a little bit last night because it's the opener and there's no Kai. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it took him a while to get engaged. And when he got engaged, when he shifted into high gear, 
shots started falling. And in the second half, he scores 21. Well, now it's about what the Nets are doing because they're starting to eat into that lead. And a couple times they got it down to seven. Mm -hmm. So in the fourth quarter, Kevin really starts to feel it. And if we could quickly see his last two shots that he made in the game, because they were big time vintage Kevin Durant type shots. There's the first one. You can't stop that when he gets it going like that. And then he does. I got this. I got this. I got it right in your eye, a three, and that cut it down to only 14. My point is, in the NBA, with the the hot-handed three-point shooting, Patty Mills had made seven of seven, Joe Harris was hot, James was hot, and Kevin was getting hot. All of a sudden, I look up, and Steve Nash has yanked all of them off and said, no mas, we give up at the four-minute mark. Well, I thought they could cut the 14 down to four or two or one. And I don't know why Steve Nash gave up so quickly on this game because it was becoming about what the Nets were finally doing. But here's the thing. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Chris and Skip, that KD and Giannis play to a standstill. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, Chris Middleton and and, and um, uh, Drew. Drew Holiday yep. will play James Harden to a standstill. Okay, so now... Look at your bench. Look at their bench. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna win that battle? This is where Kyrie. This is know. where they could. This is what made them so uh, basically unbeatable with Kyrie. Now there's only two. You got two guys. They got three guys. They can match up with you. They can match you scoring for scoring. Now we turn it into a bench game. Milwaukee's bench is better than yours. I don't know about that. If Lamarcus can get back in yeah, gear, yeah, I like and he, the Nets bench. Yeah, come on, you like it better than Milwaukee? Ooh, man, I don't know. And and wait until I Cam like Thomas starts to figure it out. Who? The summer league MVP, Cam no. Thomas, their first round pick. And they still, and they still, now they didn't have Bobby Porters. He's no. a bench player. Now, I believe Grayson Allen will go to the bench and DiVincenzo will be starting. So now you got uh, uh, Grayson Allen, Coddington, yeah. and and uh, uh, Bobby Porters. Even out of the Kumpo's brother, Thanis, Thanasis. Mm -hmm. He's playing better. He like, he got, and, and Nawara, Skip, he looks like a player. Okay. Now, I know it's one game, and I ain't going to say, oh, he's going to be six man of the year. But mm -hmm. he looks like a player. He was taking and making <laughs> shots with a lot of confidence. Now, I know he's at home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you at home, the role players play a little better at home than the role, uh, than on the road. But I like what I saw. I mm -hmm. like what I saw. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't going to get no bigger. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant ain't gaining no 20 pounds. So mm -hmm. he got the bang. 11 rebounds and two block <laughs> shots by Kevin Durant. Okay, what did Giannis do? Mm -hmm. Giannis was 32-14. Seven assists, two block shots, and a steal, mm. and a partridge in a pear tree. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best player. I don't know about you last night, Chris, but I saw the best player in the NBA get a ring last night. He was mm. the best. Oh, yeah. That, well, Giannis, I saw, you saw that too. The best player on the planet finally heated up late in the game, and if his toenail had not been on the line <laughs> last year, we'd be having a whole different conversation. We had, but, there had been no ring but ceremony. But we having this conversation. Okay. Giannis is the best player, and he got the ring he last night to show it. the best player. You know what? I'm going to ask Justin the Beverly Hills because I know he got one. Can I bring that ring out here to show you? Yeah. I'd like see to what see you it. Didn't please get. do bring it and see then what you leave it get. with me. It would be great. <laughs> or if I could just have a version of that. I, I don't even mind that I have nothing to do with having a ring, but I'd like to see it. Thank you, Shannon. Yep. No mercy. After saying he would fight through his labrum injury, Baker Mayfield is officially out as the Cleveland starter for tomorrow night's game against the Broncos. The team announced the move this morning and said Case Keenum will get the start under center. So, Shannon, what's your take on this? Well, my take is that Baker has been playing bad before he actually hurt the shoulder. Mm. Two scores in the last eight drives and one with the Hail Mary. So let's not let's not pretend let's not pretend that he was just lighting it up mm. like you said. Cause you always like to go back. No, no. Shoulder's been hurt for a month, and he's been playing like crap mm. for two months. Okay. Yeah. Well, the season's not that long. Well, how long the season been going? That's how long mm. he's been playing bad. Mm. And I know you want to go back. Pro Football Focus said that. No, man, down your, the your eyes told you no, last year he he's twenty touchdowns to three interceptions over a la the last eleven games. And let me guess. They went to Pittsburgh and won a playoff game. And, 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 and he was playing so good because why? And you know what? I didn't hear a peep out of you for eleven straight weeks on this show about Baker Mayfield. Yep. Not a peep. You know why? Because Nick Chubb and Kareem mm -hmm. Hunt was running the oh, air out of the football, and yeah. now all of a sudden Nick oh. Chubb got hurt, and now all of a sudden Baker. Mm -hmm. Remember? Oh, he was taking. Pictures. I thought he was Andy Leibovitz the way he was taking pictures of the guys in the end yep. zone until Justin Herbert got the lead mm. and then the Baker needed to bring him from behind yep. and then he disappeared. Yep. And he disappeared again. That was his chance to show Kyler. Mm. I'm better than you, Kyler. We yep. both number one pick. We both won the mm. Heisman. Mm -hmm. But I'm the man from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Kyler say sit down. Mm. Did he? He say sit uh, down. He's got some weapons.
Uh, remember, there's no Jarvis Landry. Oh, right my God. Yeah, well, so then he had Njoku. He yeah. had OB Day. Mm -hmm. OBJ. He had people. Uh, you just went people over Joe. the guy he's stuck with, OBJ. Oh, he's stuck with OBJ now. Two straight weeks dropped a crucial fourth down pass that hit him right in the hands. So you scorched Baker Mayfield on Monday's show, and I told you wrong, wrong, wrong. He is hurt. He has a torn labrum in his left shoulder. And on top of that, it's a second injury. It keeps dislocating. It popped out twice in Sunday's game, and he was without both of his Pro Bowl caliber offensive tackles. Well, he needs to sit down there. He needs to sit down there. Yeah, and so there's no Jarvis, and there's no Chubb, the battering ram back that, that drives the offense on the run game, and all of a sudden, his defense is playing worse than Kansas City's defense. You always say, oh, Mahomes can't overcome his defense. Well, how is Baker going to overcome this year? Lord. It is shockingly bad. Are you a business? Are you open? If you open for business, serve yep. me. Mm -hmm. Don't tell. If you close, close shop. If Baker's mm -hmm. hurt, sit down. He just he, did. Okay, then. He just said enough. Yeah, I can't enough. do it. I'm tired of sticking Short up the joint. Short week, Thursday game, can't do it. He's like, I'm tired of sticking up the joint. Mm. He stuck it up, Skip. You know, Skip, why you do this? He's hurt. He's hurt. You got to give him a little bit of a break here. No. Because he was really good down the stretch. Cleveland last fans year. are hurt because he disappointed them again. No. This is supposed to be the year. You're hurt because you thought Sam Darnold was the best quarterback in that draft. No. And I'll take well, Baker over well, Sam Darnold any well, Sunday, we know Monday, who, Thursday. Well, we know who the best quarterback is yeah. Lamar Jackson okay. and then Josh Allen. You, you could you can argue the first there one. I'm not sure about the there second There ain't no argue. Yeah. Who, you, who you debate with? You mean the guy who got stonewalled on take, fourth and inches? I tell the other you what, day? go debate with Hazel. Yeah. He, you, you got a better <laughs> Have to win that with debate with Hazel, but you're not debating me that Breaker Mayfield yeah. is better than Josh Allen. She won't debate with me because she knows I'm always right. <laughs> no, you wrong. Yeah. You wrong, Skip. Skip, it's okay. Yeah. I know you like Baker. He went to your school. You love Oklahoma. I, I told you before the draft, and it's not that I always like Oklahoma quarterbacks. I did not like Sam Bradford. I said no, and he was a big no. Hey, your guy might not be much better than Sam Bradford. Mm, really? <laughs> I've already seen a lot. And the irony of this conversation is once upon a time in Baker's second year. Long, league, long time ago. It wasn't that long ago. Somebody across the room started saying, I love Baker Mayfield. I'm on the bandwagon. I co-sign. I'm going to take it over from you because he's shake and bake. Yeah. You tried to nickname him shake and bake. <laughs> and now you're trying to shake him and bake him. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. Skip, I was wrong. Mm. I'm, not too, I'm not too big to admit that I was wrong. Mm. Okay. I, I was I was. I was wrong. I put my trust in my, in my misguided. I was okay. misguided. So this man has had four head coaches and four coordinators in three years, and you're still just trying to drive him right out of the league. And a lot of times, I mean, normally the coach, the quarterback not playing well when they get different head coaches. Mm. That, 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 that's, that's a direct correlation. Mm. I think he's going to be just fine. Just fine to do it well. What do you mean just fine? Super Bowl winning? Championship winning? I, I think mean, he's what? highly capable of winning a Super Bowl. I'm highly capable mm -hmm. of walking from here to Miami. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to do it, mm. but I'm capable of doing it. Well, maybe you, you should try. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should not Are try. Are you? Oh, by the way, uh, Shannon, today is a special anniversary what is it? for you. We have some video, right? Uh, this is a big deal. Shannon no. set the tight end single game receiving record oh, that's right. 19 no, no. years Woo! ago. Pulling away from him. <laughs> Pull it away 19 years ago, Skip. 19, 19 years, years ago today. That Shay cooking. Shay was cooking that day. Ooh, I was cooking with Crisco. I burned Arrowhead down. That's it again. Whoop, there it is. Now I skip, baby. 214. Look at this. Skip, watch I start pulling away from that linebacker. I thought you Skip see? and I were going to celebrate Wait. you, but you're celebrating yourself when right now. When are you going to stop living in the past? <laughs> Skip, that's still there until somebody gets 215 or Wait, more. Wait, do you realize I go for 214 every day no, on this no, show? No, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, every no, day I do it, and I don't no, boast no, about no, it. I don't brag no, about no, it. No, I don't need to live in the no. past because I'm going to do it again tomorrow. No, Look at you, that you speech, could see. Shannon. You could see. You take the wrong angle, and I run right into the end zone for a touchdown. I haven't noticed oh. that. This is oh. awesome. You've been at Jaden 19 years. Oh, I know. I don't know if that's a good stop thing. No, we can't that. stop it. We cannot <laughs> stop it. They can only hope to contain me that day. They couldn't stop it either. Mm. Oh, get loose, Shay. This Pick him up, put him down, son. Run for your life. You, okay, you we've watched it 10 times. Shannon, congratulations. <laughs> don't do this for today's you Broncos because I think they need it. Man, go ahead, on, Skip. I mean, they do I'm need it, guys. How will Joel Embiid play without Ben Simmons tonight? Ooh. Shannon will continue celebrating in the break. That's next. No mercy. Ben Simmons will miss tonight's game against the 76ers after being suspended for conduct detrimental after he refused to sub in during a practice drill. Joel Embiid said the team wasn't here to babysit Simmons, and now the big man will be the main focus of the team's offense tonight against New Orleans. So, Shannon, 
What do you expect from Joel Embiid? I expect them to be dominant. Ben got that. I don't give a F walk on that court skill. Mm. I expect them to be dominant. I expect him to have 35 15. He's going against Valanchunas. Yep. Uh, ben, I mean, he just doesn't have the size, the, the weight to keep Joel and B from doing whatever he wants to do. So Who I does. Nobody. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's why he's always going to be in the MVP conversation, Skip. I got him going for 35 and 15. I hope you were right. I have told you from the start, I believe Joel Embiid is the best center in all of basketball, a little better than your man Jokic, who did win the MVP. Mm -hmm. But now Joel has taken so many shots at Ben Simmons that he has put himself on the hot yes, seat. He, he has. has raised his own expectations mm -hmm. that he's going to have to right. now live up to. Right. So I hope you're right about 35 and 15 because that's the kind of night the statement he needs to right. make right now, this is my team and we're going to be just fine without that guy. Well, he's going to have to be, Skip, because basically he said, by saying what he's saying, basically help push Ben out the door. Yep. He said, I got this. He did Brett, what he said. I can do it. Yep. We don't need him. Mm -hmm. Me and the rest of the guys that want to be here, we can do this. Okay. Well, again, I hope you're right because I'm not exactly sure. I still say they'd be better with Ben oh, yeah, if yeah, they could so. figure it out, and I hope they do. But, Joel... You're on. He's Here on. Go. He's, he's on. Yep. But I think he's going to dominate Valanchunas. Valanchunas can play now. He's not he's a bad not player. Bad. But, but Joel Embiid is a different animal. Better with sure. Ben if he wants to participate in team activities. That is it for us. Skip Shannon. Great stuff today. The Herd is on now. Have a good one.